So welcome to everyone, both here and at home, and maybe around the world. Who knows who's watching today? Uh, welcome to the Hampton Municipal Budget Committee, the December 4th, 2018 version. I hope you all join me in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you could all remain standing for a moment, I'd like to have a brief moment of silence for our former president, George H.W. Bush, who passed away recently. Thank you. No one's heard it yet. Tomorrow is our national day of mourning for President uh, H uh, George H. W. Bush. Even the stock market is being closed. It's quite an honor. Uh, old business. Uh, we've got uh, information requests somewhere here on my screen. There we go. Um, the only thing pending right now is the uh, pay difference between uh, the current and the past. Park and Rec Director, which has been outstanding for some time. I sent an email to Christy this afternoon reminding her of that. Um, she did forward me as well the uh, list of funds, which are um, on our agenda for Thursday. Um, it was in PDF form and it wasn't complete and it, it didn't have all of the uh, dollar amounts for the uh, funds in the trustees. Our world. Uh, so I asked for an Excel spreadsheet, and if necessary, I'll have to fill that up, and then I'll get it out to you. So we'll talk about scheduling, I think, at the end of the meeting, because I don't want to delay the presentation of SAU 90. We have some scheduling considerations to, uh, uh, to uh, talk about, uh, and I'll just leave it at that. Is there any other comments under old business? Great. Um, we have, uh, as you know, the SAU 90 ballot-related uh, articles tonight, including the budget. And uh, before we begin, just as the town manager does, before he discusses, or the selectmen discuss, the warrant articles for the town, uh, they decide whether or not they want their tally votes to be placed on the ballot. And we need to do the same thing now. Does the uh, budget committee wish to have its tally votes placed on the ballot? I make a motion that the ballots be on the list, please. Do you want the tally votes tally. on the yes. ballot of SAU 90? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Pluff. Discussion. Can you do an explanation of what you exactly want? Is that our group or all governing? Entities? No, it's specific for SAU 90. That's, is that correct, David? Correct. Any other discussion? Okay, uh, if you're in support of having the budget committee's uh, tally votes be placed on the SAU 90 ballot, please raise your hand. Those opposed? Mr. Frank is abstaining. Everyone else except me, of course, who's Mr. Indifferent, uh, or neutral, I should say. <laughs> right, Kathleen? Welcome, Kathleen and Nathan. Uh, Thank you. I believe that you are up, so do you think? Uh, oh, Frank. Yes, uh, introduction of members. Did we bypass uh, he, that? He, he skips oh. that. He said we all, everybody knows. I, I, know, we, I know everyone so well. We just keep <laughs> forgetting that. Television, so. Mr. LeBranch, would you begin introducing ourselves, please? Most certainly. Stephen LeBranch. Maureen Buckley. David Maurer. Mike Bluff. My name is Jones. Brian Warburton. Frank DeLuca, representing the school board. Good evening, Frank, and thank you for your assistance. Um, we have a bunch of uh, brains here, including the uh, business manager and the superintendent of SAU 90 and I believe some staff behind them as well who may offer okay. some uh, wisdom for us tonight as we consider the various articles. Kathleen, you want to do your thing now? Sure. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to get started. I know that you're anxious to um, hear our presentation. Um, and always, we appreciate the opportunity to be here, uh, to spend some time with you, to um, have you an opportunity to deliberate on our budget. Uh, just as our school board spent uh, in excess of um, 15 hours deliberating on the budget line by line, page by page, 
Um, we have this <coughs> opportunity, and we see this as an opportunity to be able to share with the public where we're at as a school district. So again, Nathan and I really appreciate that. I thought before I, we jump into the budget, um, I, I wanted to address a couple of things. And the first one is um, the issue around land on Toll Farm Road. It came up at our presentation, if you remember, back in the fall, I believe it was September. Yeah. There was uh, questions, of, I think Bob Ladd brought it up, and I wanted to return to that topic so that you had an understanding of what the board's position was. And um, the board um, has decided that they will retain that land uh, under the auspices of the school board. And they had a, a, a really good reasons for it. Um, first of all, it's been very much of a community site. Um, as uh, We check it all the time. We go over. Um, I've been over. Nathan's been over. Keith Lassard, who has joined us tonight, also um, monitors the um, area. And um, we find a lot of community folks there on the property, using the property in a recreational way. So that was of, con that was of, of great concern for the board. We also know that a number of Boy Scouts have done their Eagle projects there and have made um, changes to that property uh, to allow for better access for the community. So uh, that they wanted to protect that. We know that a lot of the kids use the pond, whether it's the fishing or ice skating. Um, uh, this, this spring I saw a dad and his son out there with a, one of those motorboats and they were racing the little motorboat all around the pond. So um, it was a little guy, it was kind of neat to see. So um, it's almost being used like a park, you would say. Uh, it is, and, mm -hmm. it, and I got a call from the neighbors. There's a condominium uh, or organization right up, I think, just north of the just pond. And uh, he called to say that the community, the condominium association, uses the property, and they use it to, th there's trails that you can walk. We've walked the site, and there's trails within the property that they use in the fall to walk. And then they also do uh, snowshoeing in there. So uh, with all of that, and, and probably the most important thing for the school board is, is that the kids use it for environmental purposes um, when it's appropriate. So. Uh, with all that in mind, the board has um, taken a position that they will retain the land. So I, I, I just thought it was important for me to share that information with you. It is. I think the fact that you know it's basically being used as a park yeah. raises a, you know a number of questions in my mind, including whether or not we should have SAU 90 administer all the parks in town. Mr. LeBranch. Um, if it's appropriate, I don't mean to stop the presentation, but is it appropriate for me to ask a question at this time? Please. Oh, okay. Is that posted no hunting? And the reason I say that is because, if, you know, if you've got children and people oh. walking trails and stuff, there's certain times of the year it's not safe to do that. It, it is private property. I mean, well, it belongs to the school. And I'm just asking, is it posted? I, I've not because seen a sign, Steve. So I, I just wonder if that's something you might consider because okay. if it's being used like that as much as you're saying, it probably should be posted. So nobody, so hunters know not to go yeah. there. Good point. Thank you. Okay. So I, would like to, more. I would like to add to that. In the state of New Hampshire, to the best of my knowledge, if your land is not posted and the town's open, people could go on to it hunting. So you have to actually put up a sign to say you can't do that. In other states, you have to know the owner. But in this situation, I think that's a wise Great. addition. Thank you. Um, the other co point that I did not make, but I think is, is relevant, um, the costs associated, obviously, it's always, you know, what are the costs associated with maintaining it? Um, all of the uh, trash pickup and all that is taken care of by the town public works department, mm -hmm. and they've been great at helping us. If there's any erosion, sometimes coming off the road, there's a lot of a water, especially in a heavy rainfall, that might cause erosion. They've helped us um, make sure that we don't have erosion down to the pond. Um, but then the cost is around $1,700, and all we do is have a company that comes in, mows the lawn, um, and sometimes, not every year, but we cut back the brush, especially as <coughs> it in, encroaches al along the pond. So it really hasn't been a big expense for the school district to maintain. So I know that issue has come up before t also. It's a, <coughs> it's a good use of their money. They feel it's a good use of their money. So, so the square footage uh, costs for maintenance on this? is uh, far lower than what we see in the town parks, uh, which is another argument why SCU 90 should take over the town parks. Mr. Warburton? <laughs> Excuse me. I just had a comment on this. I, I've watched all the discussions by Chairman Shepard and, and the school board regarding this. And let me just put something out there which I think you should consider. It's all well to say the Hampton School Board 
Hampton School District owns the land and the Hampton School Board members decide to keep it. I think we should be careful because boards come and go. You have the opportunity and still do to put this land in a conservation easement, then nobody can touch it. I think I think it's if and I'm I'm not on the school board, I know the decision's already been made, but I think you have to be very careful because ten years from now the whole component and makeup of the school board could change and a developer could come up and say, you know, I want to give you eight million dollars or whatever. I I appreciate what it's used for. I think the mechanism and I know Jay Diener and others brought this forward. I, I having, having been involved with the Conservation Commission for 35 years, I do a great job. I think that the, the way to tie it up, something you should think about in future years, I really believe is to go down that easement. Still keep it the way it is, but you, you run into situations, board ch people change and board change, but if you put it into a conservation easement, on the, the document itself for the school district, I think would be better off. That's just my comment. That was a consideration that right, they, they yeah. took under advisement, yeah. and they haven't dismissed that, but I think for now they wanted to just leave it the way it no, is. No, that's, that's fine. I just wanted to offer that. Thank you. The, the second issue. Mr. Dulaco, you had your hand raised? Well, uh, I kind of take personal up front when you say it's a park. It, it isn't a park. Okay. Oh, well, it's, unfortunately, it's the superintendent didn't take it's a It's basically a land that is being utilized by the community park. and by the school system right. and children using it for environmental purposes. And the whole public, actually, right? And, and, and I don't think they really want to take into consideration administrating the other parks in town. Well, you're one member the of the board, and I appreciate hearing your argument during the school board meeting, but that's not a, the debate for tonight. Uh, we're just making observations right now, right, Kathleen? Uh, so please proceed unless there are th other questions. Thank you. Um, the other uh, comment I want to make before we get started has uh, to do with House Bill 1392, which is, which is the tally on the Warren Articles. And the board, by consensus, will be placing uh, their tally on the, on the Warren Articles. Um, and um, <clears throat> so that really puts that whole issue to to, to rest. They did it by consensus. They still have to vote on several of the Warren articles, so once that's done, completed, that task is completed, <coughs> then you'll see that they will be um, on the ballot also along with now, as we as we just saw, the, bud, uh, the budget committee's vote. Okay, so I just, I kind of wanted to put that to rest also. We kind of guessed that you wouldn't want the budget committee's tally vote standing there all by itself. Perhaps, <laughs> but I, I think that uh, I, I'm I, I think I'm very positive as we come here tonight uh, relative to what the tallies will be by this committee. So, um, if I could go on, uh, the, in your book, uh, you, you know, uh, Nathan and I have presented you with uh, a lot of information and summaries. I my intent tonight, just because we we want to get to the budget, is not to go through all of that information. It's there for you. Um, particularly of importance um, for the school board is the mission and the goals that we set. I want to be very clear that the mission statement as well as the goals that are devised every year and approved <coughs> by our school board are those, those objectives that drive the budget. They know what it is that they're trying to accomplish. They accomplish it through goals and then the budget and the work that we do is reflected on those goals. So. Um, I don't want to spend any too much more time, but there is a lot of information. If there are questions that you had about the summary and the information that we put in there, obviously Nathan and I would be happy to, to answer them. Thank you. Uh, the Warren articles, you, you, I, I heard, maybe I heard wrong, that you were thinking that we would go through all of the warrants tonight. We're not quite prepared to do that. Mm -hmm. um, because the board um, will be addressing several of the warrant articles. One of them we've already um, are under the, uh, we've been advised by Sacred Heart that they will have another warrant article, so the board hasn't taken that one up yet. Mm -hmm. uh, so tonight we were hoping to focus on the budget. Is that the only one that's uh, not ready? Is the Sacred Heart one? Uh, no, because the board hasn't voted on uh, the maintenance article and. Um, they, there's other warrant article that around these um, school resource officer yes, that they still want to address. So mm -hmm. they have a meeting Tuesday night on December 11th. They will be finalizing all of that. We anticipated that January 9th or 10th, depending on your schedule, that we would return to provide you with the uh, details of those warrant articles, with the exception of the budget, of course. 
January 9th. That's um, using your dates. <coughs> Which were readily accessible to you via HamptonBud.com, right? Uh, yeah, January 9 makes sense. We'll be talking about our schedule a bit later, but what I'm hearing presently is all you really want to present tonight is the budget uh, warrant article, correct? That's correct. Is that agreeable to everyone? We'll put the other SAU 91 articles off to a subsequent date, probably January 9th? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so by consensus, we're in agreement with that. We're just going to talk about the SAU 90 budget. So, uh, please proceed. So, we'll continue. So, uh, Nate's going to walk us through uh, some of the information uh, that we have for you tonight. And it is Article 1 on operating budget. I, at, at the Chair's uh, uh, direction, I, I'll move as quickly as I can. My intent is not to talk too fast and, and leave anybody or leave any information behind. Don't want to uh, speak, just want concise. Slow, slow me down as I, well, <laughs> my, there's a lot. So to, speak in your normal voice, I'll speak, please. there's a lot to be discussed. Yeah. Uh, article one on, on our uh, warrant we anticipate will be the operating budget. Uh, I've provided you the language in the packet that you have tonight, which uh, uh, post-traumatic stress would lead me to check one more time to make sure that it is, in fact, the right fiscal year. Uh, the packet that you have tonight includes the slides for, uh, uh, for this presentation. It includes a copy of the proposed budget uh, in a single page. Uh, it includes uh, a copy of uh, revenue projections for next year, as well as a copy of the goals that the superintendent just referred to. My father always used to say, tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then remind them what you told them. So mm -hmm. starting with the current appropriations, today, based on the voting at March F-18 annual meeting, our operating budget stands at $22.9 million. We had a long-term maintenance article uh, and, uh, and a child benefit article that you see on an annual basis uh, to benefit Sacred Heart. Total appropriations of $23.3 million. In the next few minutes, we'll walk through a summary of, of uh, everything that was in that budget book that you uh, have had a chance to review. The operating budget of 22.977 million uh, will increase by a default amount of $409,548. We'll talk about the breakdown of what is in that number. It represents uh, by itself a 1.78% increase, bringing the default budget in at $23.387 million. And then we'll go through requested items that build to the total proposed budget. Requested items totaling $198,252, which represent another 0.86% increase over the current operating budget, bringing the total proposed to $23,585,440, a total 2.65% increase over the current year. It's, it's a total of $600,000 in new dollars. So as I've done every year with you, we'd, we'd like to just walk through the elements of the default. <clears throat> the biggest driver in the default is uh, costs related to special education services. I want to speak to those briefly. They total, in this case, $250,000. So as you know, we have a responsibility via the federal government and IDEA to provide for students who, um, who are disabled and require specialized instruction uh, both on, on campus in our schools or in some cases youngsters that we are unable to provide for and those youngsters are uh, in out-of-district placements. Uh, there are also occasions when we have a court-ordered placement and we have to um, adhere to that court order placement. So um, in our, in our <coughs> environment statistics you can see that we now have eight students who are out of district. That is current, that is absolute current today. And as a result, that has had a significant impact on our school district budget. Uh, many of the students are new to us. They've moved in from other communities. Um, and some of them are students that have been in Hampton all their life and um, needed specialized instruction and care. Uh, in addition, the, 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 the piece to the special education that has also um, <coughs> seen rises, and you'll see this again, is in transportation because those kids, those youngsters need to be transported from point A, which is their home, to wherever that um, out-of-district placement is. And that has really um, driven our budget significantly, and it's been over the last several years. Uh, and uh, there's a proposal tonight in the budget that I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about. 
it's a proposal that we have worked with our special ed director, uh, Jessica Parsons, in um, hoping to um, contain uh, those costs in a way that is, um, will be beneficial to kids. So I, I think, you know, um, special ed has and will continue to be uh, difficult. We do get some reimbursement uh, through catastrophic aid, special education aid. It's usually about 50% of costs that are three and a half times state average. So it takes a lot to get a reimbursement. But we have been getting reimbursements for those youngsters uh, that are placed out of district. So that program in this category of special education default, as opposed to increasing our tuitions by uh, potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars to find placements for these students that can be served in district, there is the addition of one special education teacher to drive this program. There are also $1,800 worth of transportation costs to provide for transportation to in-district uh, locations in the community, community placement, uh, community settings, as well as uh, $2,200 worth of supplies and materials to drive uh, that program. So already the budget has been reduced by creating an internal program as opposed to placing out <coughs> That's included in this category of special education. It, I think that one of the things that we have to understand is it, ne it, it is it it's in the default budget because we're mandated to provide these services. We have no choice. Um, that is a, a responsibility of the district, and um, it's it that decision is made in, as a team, uh, including parents and teachers and administrators as to what is the best course of action for youngsters. So there's no denying a youngster service, uh, obviously. Uh, I suppose you could, but uh, you will end up um, in, in, in the Department of Ed, and you will be ending up in a hearing and, and, and in, a, in a suit. So um, uh, we believe that the decisions that are made by our team of professional teachers and administrators and our, um, our special ed department under uh, Jess's leadership uh, that we've made good decisions for kids. The second major category that drives the default are the collective bargain salaries of teachers. In this case, we're budgeting for the final of a four-year deal that was <coughs> voted in the March, uh, negotiated in the fall of 15 and voted in the March 2016 annual meeting. It called for uh, it called for a step increase on a scale, scale growth of half a percent each year, and for those off the top of the scale, a 1.75% salary increase. All current staffing uh, as uh, this year, total dollars, $112,542. $112,542. Um, we have uh, benefit costs related to those salary changes. In the case of health insurance, our costs are rising by one and a half percent maximum. Uh, we've had a, a great track record over the last nine years. The average <coughs> is one and a half percent a year. Our rates have actually gone down three out of the last six years. We're hopeful that we'll see a modest, uh, we'll see a tempering of this. We might even see our rates stay flat. New Hampshire retirement costs have, are rising. Uh, the, uh, the state mandated contribution rates against teachers are growing by two and a half percent. It's offset a little by a 1.8 percent, uh, no, a 0.8 percent uh, reduction in the rates that we pay on the non-certified employee base. We also had uh, a 2.3 percent increase in our dental costs, um, and other than that, uh, you know, um, costs are changing based on salaries changing. So our our contracted uh, life and long-term disability rates, not life, long-term disability rates are based on salary. So if salaries are are going up. Uh, there's a, an incremental adjustment there. Health insurance costs will total 91268 next year uh, of increase, and uh, all of the other benefits combined, $80,045. <clears throat> Two more major categories that I would sum up. One is in the area of debt service. You have already, I hate to use the word, but I think it's probably apt, you have already suffered all of the increase that you'll see as a result of the Hampton Academy renovation and reconstruction project. You saw that in previous budgets, uh, and you'll see that, and you saw it in your most recent tax bill. <coughs> so our debt service is actually going down into next year because the center school addition from 99 has been retired. <coughs> that, that bond payment was finished August 
just passed August of 18 in the current year budget we made our final payment and so if that comes out of the budget you see a net reduction of $137,658 moving forward into next year all of the other changes by default in the budget total $9,740 uh, two of those that add up to 7,500 some are related to section 504 accommodation plans for students this is another federally mandated <coughs> program not identification in the special ed realm these are uh, I will call them regular ed students who need accommodations and have uh, 504 plans that define the accommodations that they uh, need and are entitled to 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 uh, participate uh, in the in the in the regular uh, school day all of those total 409,548 it's a 1.78% increase that we talked about uh, and that is the default budget beyond the default we have what we call requests that drive to the proposed budget uh, there are two staffing impacts uh, in the request and the first is the addition of a child and family interventionist position you want to yeah, let me, let me speak to that. Um, the, that position uh, came about through a grant that we received, a $50,000 grant um, through the state from the federal government to address social-emotional learning. And um, that whole curriculum of social-emotional learning is really uh, trying to get to childhood trauma, things that happen to kids that cause <coughs> them to... Uh, Make, make poor choices, uh, not reach their potential in school uh, in, in general, not, um, uh, not reaching the expectations that we have for them. Uh, that we have a team of teachers and staff that have been working on this GROW grant. Uh, it, um, it, it does focus on this. The board last year with the GROW grant uh, put in place a family, child and family interventionist this is a, a counselor, a certified counselor, who goes in and works with kids in the classroom, does group activities, will do, uh, uh, also does uh, uh, individual counseling, and then also meets with families to help them during these crises. Um, as you recall, last year the governor had a task force on school safety, and one of the recommendations that came out of that task force was to implement a social emotional learning curriculum and that's what Hampton School District SAU 90 is doing and as part of this we asked the board to consider uh, funding this position of a child and family interventionist so that is a brand new position uh, but we feel that it is an uh, integral part of, of, of what we do you know last night I, I, I mentioned it to somebody last night I had a chance I was in Concord for the um, the hearing, the public hearing on mental health. And the state hasn't had a vibrant mental health plan to deal with all the mental health issues. They don't have the services for the kids and families. And this hearing was in, in response to their new 10-year plan. And it was really sad. It was a sad evening in many ways to hear the tragedies that families and young people have gone through around issues and one of the pieces that was brought up, to, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to be there, was talking about the, the, the role of schools in this. You know, and, I, and, and the and importance of helping our teachers and our kids understand uh, the, 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 um, the consequences of their decisions and what happens when uh, they're faced with um, issues. And mental health happens, mental health issues happens to be one of those issues. So. I think this position is really uh, integral to our, to the work that we do in the district, and I hope that you will consider this um, when when we go through the budget. Um, I just want to make sure that I think I've kind of covered that. Uh, uh, Jess is here too. If there's any particular in, uh, specific questions around this uh, position, typically we do go through these budgets uh, section by section. Do we want to continue with that with the SAU ninety? Sure, why not? We're okay with that? Okay. So is there questions on the presentation? Uh, Maureen. Yeah, hi. I just uh, have a question about the child and family uh, interventionist position. What, what would be the requirements for that? <coughs> the, the person is a certified counselor. Uh, the person that we have on staff has um, got a background in psychology. 
and um, has, is certified school counselor. You're talking about taking somebody who's now present in the system as a guidance counselor in the building to become this? That she's currently doing this role. Remember, it was last year we got it through a grant, and the okay. board supported it. This year we're making it part of our district. Okay. Um, so we have the position, which is really good, because we can see what are the outcomes of this work when she's in classrooms with kids, mm -hmm. and then it, her individual caseload, as well as the feedback that we get from the families, because they were, as you know, the families, the teachers, and the kids, they have to work together for it to work. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mr. Moore. <coughs> so that's a 44,752 figure for hiring somebody. It's that's correct. For. What are the costs for benefits that get added on, such as health benefits? Is that all included? It's coming. It's not in the 44. It's in the, <coughs> it's in the next slide. If I, I'll just finish up. The benefits related to it are here as well. I'd okay. like to know what the, when you're done with the next slide, how much, how does that, does that stay 44? Or I'm going to make up is it 144, which I know it's not going right. to be. I'm, I'm exaggerating by design. Because in other areas, we kind of have what's this and what's that. So I'd like to just understand it. I'm not against it. I just no. want to understand Absolutely. it. So, do you have the answer to that question? I, I will. I'll, it'll so take me a second. So when you create it, just flag me and, I'll, and we'll get yep. you in there, okay? Any other questions Thank on you. the summary? I, I'm Walbert. just going to make a comment. I'd rather, I, I'm going to wait. We're on page seven, a great presentation so far, but I'd like to wait till they get through the end. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just I have dealing with the summary now. No questions yeah. or comments on yeah. summary. Great. So Let's far. Move on. So, uh, so there's another position being added, which is that of a custodian in the request. Uh, throughout the process of, uh, of uh, the discussion related to the Hampton Academy renovation and reconstruction project, we talked about the fact that we hoped that there would be operational balance that our efficiencies would make up for the increased uh, space. But the one thing that we've always known that we would need would be an additional custodian. The project took us from an 84, 85,000 square foot facility to nearly 120,000 120, square foot facility with the addition of the auditorium and the gymnasium. Uh, and so this $37,856 is for a, a custodian position at Hampton Academy to service that extra square footage. Okay. Uh, let's go section by section some, now. So Are you done, Nathan? No, just a couple I'm more. Sorry, I thought you no, were done. No, I'm sorry. sorry. Just a couple more. So we also had a couple of other uh, salary impacts that we want to talk about. First, substitute teaching. Substitute teachers are increasing by $21,000. Uh, you saw that, and we can look at that in 1100, uh, where the substitute line, you can see what the excesses have been in that based on maternities and, and illnesses, uh, substitute teaching positions over the last couple of years. So the board made it, uh, <coughs> proposed a change to that account. There's also an increase in curriculum and summer accounts that total $3,200. And then the board ag adopted a 1.75% salary and wage increase in the non-union category. So not collectively bargained teachers, not collectively bargained paraprofessionals, but our administrative core, our secretarial staff, our custodial staff, and the, our uh, technology team, all of the non-union um, staff in the building. Um, and, uh, and so that totals $29,706. And then with regard to benefit changes, uh, I'll go back and pull, I can show you, but I, we've lumped the total benefit changes related to these positions, $37,423. That's the taxes and the health insurance and the benefits. Student transportation is another category. Um, we, we are looking at, we, we are enjoying right now the last year of our contract with First Student for busing, and we are working on negotiations with First Student and other providers to come up with uh, services <coughs> moving forward. We anticipate a 3% increase, and so we propose that. That's $19,756. And all of the other smaller dollar uh, changes throughout the budget add up to $4,459. I categorize those. $1,330 of that is increases related to instructional lines. There's reduction of $4,471 in administrative accounts. And then in the facilities area, there's a $7,600 net increase that adds to that. And so the total proposed or requested increase adds up to $198,252. That's a 0.86% increase and brings us back to where we started, which was a, a uh, proposed budget of 23585 43 million, yeah. yeah. Did I say thousand? Yeah. Yes. 23,585,000. <laughs> 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 Mr. LeBrant. Um, in my book, under the, just, be, just prior to the child and 
family interventionalist. There's a page experimental learning program yes. and mission justification. And on the back of that, the budget, is this not also a new position? Because so special so education teacher, additional FTE, costs 55957 I'm just confused. Yep. So what that, is this thing? those costs were part of that $253,000 of special education costs we started with. Okay. Okay. So that's part of your default. That's, this is a that's requirement. As, a, as cool. opposed to out of district but placements. It, yes. A requirement in the sense that it's a program that we believe that will help us contain costs because mm -hmm. the students who are part of this program will not be out of district place at significant increases. I mean, an out of district placement youngster can cost us anywhere from $75,000 per child to one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000. I mean, mm -hmm. it, is, it is incredibly expensive. Okay. And um, so this, we feel, will keep our kids in the community, mm -hmm. least restrictive environment, with their peer groups, in their hometown, um, under the guise of our teacher and the support staff that we have. Okay, that's a very good explanation. Thank you very much. I think that this is I, I want to make it clear, important. too, one more thing. This is for middle school age youngsters. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're not, we, you know, we, what the state has a rule that you cannot have youngsters <coughs> greater than a four-year separation, so you can't have younger kids with older kids in a program. You, you have to mm -hmm. adhere to a four-year span and no, uh, no greater than that. Maureen. I just want to ask, um, do we have any children right now that are out of district as far as residential placement anywhere? Yes, we do. How many do we have? I'm going to turn to the director behind me. Okay. Hi. No, yeah, I don't, yes, I just would yeah. like, we I'm looking a, for a number. That's yeah, we, one. Okay. And that's court order. Oh, I understand yeah. how it's that's done. Yeah. It's different the, than district. The, uh, yeah, so that, I understand. Yeah. The rest yeah. of the students all are day students, and we transport them back and forth every day. Okay. Okay. Thank ask you. For the price. David, excuse me. I'm done, I'm done, thank you. Thanks. Mr. Moore, you wish to speak? What's the cost of that court ordered one? Just as an example, so we understand how much they charge. Cost? Without naming the person, obviously. Um, so, court order gets a little tricky because we don't necessarily have to pay the full placement uh, with court order. Uh, although we group all of, we have eight kids out of district, one of which is court order, that um, we have to pay up to a cap. Right. Um, we, we have to budget about just under $50,000 or just over 50000 for the court order because. When we reach a certain threshold, the state starts collecting the bill. The total cost of that is somewhere closer to one hundred thousand dollars. But the Hamptons cost is around fifty. On that particular on that, that particular student, yes, mm -hmm. we cap we cap out it at just around, okay. just around fifty thousand. Great. So are we ready to go section by section now, guys? Yes, Brian. Oh, it sounds great to me. Okay, you know you're chomping at the bit over there. Well, so I'd let's begin with uh, regular education, about eleven hundred. Are there any questions or comments on that section called regular education? The question, uh, oh, I'll raise my hand, I'm sorry, Mr. Jim. Mr. Walbert. The, um, this was in the summary. Let me start off by saying uh, I, I really appreciate uh, Mr. <coughs> Lunny and Superintendent Murphy. The, the presentations are always excellent and really is a nice guide. Um, the, 13.7 requested increase in substitute teachers. I don't know if you went over that in the summary, but uh, is it we're getting more teachers? Is that what it is? Uh, on line uh, 50120, uh, the... Oh, the 13.7%. Yes, $21,000. So if I, let me just pull up the detail line and say... Um, our, our substitute line has run a uh, total expense of 172 almost right. in 16, 17, just over 203,000 last year. And our budget currently is 153.9. And the board felt like they really needed to chase, if you, I hate to use that word, but they really needed to bring this budget line more in line with actuals because 
because maternities and illnesses are simply driving us closer to 200,000 on an annual basis. So that $21,000 increase was to bring the line to 175,000. But 175 is no nowhere uh, nowhere near 203. So I, I, well, I was I argued with them because I said I you know I, I can't I guarantee any given year, and they uh, they essentially split the difference. They took 175, it being a little better than okay. a little higher than the ones the 16, 17. Part of it is just. I simply said I don't think that we can, even though we have seen multiple years that reach 200,000, I don't think that we can ask for that much and drive the budget that high. It's not a line that we can quote unquote control in that regard. That's Although good. this line also contributes to substitutes for professional development. Correct, yeah. And, yeah. and that we can temper as we see some of that and we can yeah. push back some. I don't have any more for this section, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I think it's uh, important for the committee to note that unlike the town budget book, the actuals here do represent 12 months, correct? Yes. yes. This is not through nine months. As the That's time. correct. So keep that in mind. And, I, and I, I have not reflected the actuals for the year we're in currently, because as we stand here and prepare it, I'm only, I, I'm, I'm July and August, which are very it. quiet months. We don't spend a lot, uh, you know, in terms of salaries. And now I'm, no, I'm September, October, and chasing into November, right. and it's hard to project what an actual, so you have to see two years of actual and then contemplate this year's budget that was anticipated. Thank you. Are you suggesting that we should uh, change the format of the book to include two years of actuals? I, they're here. Okay. There, yes, sir. Uh, I did. Matter of fact, we did that. Uh, Jerry Zanoy. You know, I'm looking at the summary. And I whacked see. me a couple. In the summary, in the in the summary, in this summary. Yeah. No, I only list one. In the right. book, page by page, there are two years. Well, I, I, just I stand out of, with Jerry. We should do that on the summary too. I can work on that then. Okay. I, I run out of acreage. Okay. I don't want to make them any smaller than they are. But yes, it, it's in the spreadsheet. It's just hidden because it, there wasn't room on the page. Well, let WordWrap take over. That's I'll work right on that. Yeah. Will. Well set on uh, regular education, everybody okay? Moving on to special education. Any questions or comments on special education, Mr. Wahlberg? Well, I just want to start off by saying, you know, and I, I said this at the town, uh, the selectmen's review so far, and I, I'm a big believer in communication over this medium. And Jess, you've got a home run in Jess, because she's not only enthusiastic, but she explains things. And you know, people look at me sometimes and say, but we have boards in this town that sputter, they don't know what they're talking about, they don't talk to the public, they're talking down. I appreciate your organization that comes through and explains things to the public. So I, I'll start off by saying that I really appreciate her reports. Um, and the only, the only really comment I have is, and this is, I think Nate, you, um, alluded to this, but just for the public to understand, under tuition, under special ed, that's, once again, we have no, it's not something we're going to control either, right? Right. So they, that $832,000, it is what it is. Right. Right. Okay. That's all I have. And thank you, Jess, again, and the great work. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on this special education? No? Mr. Chair, would you mind if I took a moment to introduce some folks behind me? Oh, absolutely. Because... They Only if they're willing to stand uh, up and be I think they will because okay. they're pretty used to it. Um, and you all have had a chance to meet Please Jessica. And, and Jessica is our uh, uh, director for special education. But also joining us tonight is school there, board. Right? Jessica's okay. right here. Joining us tonight is Andrea Shepard, yes. one of our school board members. Andrea, and, hi. Over there. And, <laughs> and you can see our three building principals, Tim Lannon, who's over at Center. Uh, Dr. Lois Coster at Let Marston. Let the camera see you. Yeah, and uh, there he goes. <laughs> and Lois uh, Coster over at Marston Good and David O'Connor uh, over at Hampton Academy. And our f director of facilities, um, what, what is his name? <laughs> no. <laughs> Keith Lassard. Keith, stand, take a, stand up and take a bow, Keith. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you. And, you know, um, Brian, you were, you're point is well taken. You know, this work doesn't happen without a team approach, and mm -hmm. we really have tried to foster that in that all the folks that sit at the table with us, and they're not all here tonight, but, you know, they're all in different places, but that is so critical for yeah. us and into making sure that we communicate, and that is a, a goal of our school board, around communication with our with our community. So I appreciate your comments, but I, I appreciate what they do every, yes, every day, too. Okay, Thank you for questions? letting me do that. Sure. Any other questions or comments on special education? 
or other special comments. Okay, moving on to the extracurricular program. Any questions or comments there? Mr. LeBranch. I think that um, I think that in this book, um, Nathan tests us to see if anybody actually reads the thing. Oh, okay. Okay. Did I leave something behind so, I shouldn't have? No, no. So <laughs> Don't I, worry, I, Steve. You already had your diploma. Don't worry about it. I actually <laughs> looked through this whole book, believe it or not. And I think that you probably throw at least one little thing in there, just to see if anybody's watching, OK? Under uh, student assemblies, yes, you have something called flying dogs. Flying dogs? <laughs> I have to think that you, that's, the, that's the one thing that you put in well, there, well, you just to catch me. No, don't you all leave me hanging. Somebody's got flying dogs going on, don't they? Right. No? Imagination. <laughs> it's right there, <laughs> black and white. Flying dogs as an assembly? Oh, yeah. Underneath the human calculator. Yep. Wow. Did I catch you? I can't imagine I made that up, but and, maybe and somebody was excellent. And one other thing that I noticed um, under... How much is that, Steve? 9,000. 9,000 for flying dogs and no one can explain it? It's under extracurricular <laughs> no, student it's assemblies. No, it's more than that. It's... It's only one assembly at one school. I thought it was the, um, so to be honest, I thought it right? was the Chinese. Well, it's not broken out as each act. Yeah, acrobats. Yeah, there were 9,000 total. There were eight oh, different. Total for all the yeah, right. I see. Uh, Is that the Chinese acrobats? Is that what that was? I think so. <laughs> Flying dogs are Chinese acrobats? Yeah, they bring them. Yeah. Okay, the other, the other thing I had was under. Um, Thank you, Steve, for you bringing welcome. that to our attention. The dog. Okay, so on the, you turn the page. And at the Marston School, um, one of the things I noticed, this is also under that same section, um, you have uh, WHS auditorium user fees. I should think that that probably will go away once you have your wonderful new auditorium at the True. Academy. Yes. So that line should be... We, little, we, expect, right through it, right, you know? we expect that that will be ready to go uh, in September right, of so, 19. Right, so for this okay. budget, you shouldn't have to <coughs> go to the winter kind of for anything. Okay, that's all I had on that, that particular thing. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Other questions or comments on extracurricular programs? Yeah. I, have a, I have one or two on that. Um, Salaries after school activities are up 14 and a half percent. Briefly? Uh, briefly, <laughs> we were paying after school activities an hourly rate of 27.50 um, to our staff for after school homework club, all kinds of organizations, things that they do after school with the youngsters, and we upped it to $30 <coughs> an hour. So that that reflects the increase that you're seeing. That's That's cool. David, Two thirty dollars an hour. Thank you. I'm just it's a fourteen and a half percent increase, just in uh, pay. Is that correct? Yes, that's all pay. But the other, the other thing was that the, the pay raise of fourteen point five percent. The board, um, the board introduced uh, dollars to pay teachers for overnight time, a small dollar um, for trips that they take when they support students on overnight trips or environmental camp. Uh, Washington DC trip they've talked about a uh, trip to Quebec uh, because teachers have not previously been compensated at all for those evenings and there's been some pushback so there was a three thousand dollar addition to the budget for that purpose well, on this I, sub line item? on that line so if I take that out it would have been a smaller percentage increase such as uh, I'll tell you okay 40 what is the N1 camp environ Environmental, environmental camp, okay. Okay. Environmental sixth camp. graders go. And that's up 10%. The, the adjustment in the account was 6.5% without that 3,000 being added. So you're basically given a 6.5% raise to the existing extracurricular people in addition to adding some money to pay teachers who might. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Practice in that area, is that fair? Well. Uh, I'd like to comment on that. I'm asking that. I'd have to ask you to, re to ask the question again. Don't you train the it's, thought, did you? Yeah. I, <laughs> so, so the line itself, yes, was adjusted to reflect twenty-seven fifty, turning into thirty dollars an hour. Okay. Um, uh, and then they added the three thousand for 
really it's it was not it was not what they added is not sufficient to pay anybody an hourly charge right. for a period of time it was more of a of a, an honorarium if you will or a thank you for contributing it's all of those additional hours it's thirty dollars so it's essentially the equivalent of one hour of time for the overnights that they do when they support these trips and go away right so the three thousand dollar bump is for additional personnel who weren't paid previously previously yeah. all right yeah that's that was it yeah thank you yep. um and the Enron camp is up 10% because the environment is in less healthy condition, I guess? Or? No, just the costs associated with the trip. <clears throat> okay. Transportation? The transportation is part of it. Um, we have to provide nursing services and mm -hmm. the cost per pupil for them to attend the camp. Mm -hmm. Okay. No other questions on extracurricular, right? So summer school, any questions or comments on summer school? Great. Any questions on uh, or comments on guidance services? So this is where that and, uh, child and family. I can tell you, I did a quick calculation. The benefits on that position total just over seventeen thousand, seventeen thousand eighty-four, which brings the total of that body to sixty-one eight thirty-six. Thank you, yes, sir. Mr. Walbert, I, I just want to make a comment or ask a, a combination, a question, or both. So this, this gets into this area, and we used to talk about this all the time, when something is funded by grant money, then it goes away. Yeah. You know, the regular people on High Street or other streets sit back and they say, regardless, it's still a new, in their mind, it's a new position right. that now is funded. So my question to you is, because and I, I think I shared this with, when I saw Kathleen tonight, um, throughout this whole town, the biggest impact this year of everything and people are like it's wages and wages and wages mm -hmm. and positions my question to you is this position is this was this reporting to who is this position currently reporting to this this, th this person reports to our social worker and director for wellness and jessica so let me ask a, a hypothetical question because if this position Normally, positions on boards or other boards, you, know, you might couch it by putting in a Warren article. So the taxpayers really say, well, this is what we really want. So my question to you, if for some reason the school gets a default budget, is this position going to really put you back, put you backwards? I mean, I think that the, the thing that we need to be able to be clear of is, and I'm all, and the cost is one thing, but we're adding another full-time position, which is no longer. So that's going to be the question. Well, obviously, the board will have to prioritize what the, if they if a default budget should be voted in, then the board will have to prioritize what areas that they want to preserve, and um, they will reduce where they have to. I mean, that's very clear. They know that, um, okay. and it should they decide that this position is. Uh, not warranted, then unfortunately that position has to go away because we cannot fund it. And I know that you have been very, as, as administrators of SEU 90, been very cautious. You know, two wonderful snowstorms ago in 2017, the voters approved the addition by a 13 vote margin. And we all worked very hard at that. But I was proud of the people who voted for it. But I also know that, and the chairman and I have had these conversations. It just snuck by, and I think the message was, we're going to give you that last school for all of us that have been involved, and Mike and I especially, for every school addition in this community, and rightfully so. What do we do in years to come to look at kind of, not downsizing, because you know, the special ed that Nate do talk about, absolutely, we, you know, it, it's just something that's, the people that ask me say, well, oh boy, another new position, and another position. So. I, I just wanted you to say what you said so that the public understands that if it doesn't pass, we're not going to find a way to, to get the money for it. If, if, if we have a default budget, you're not going to come back and say, oh, by the way, we're going to... You know, the routine for that is is that we will sit down with our leadership team, and that's the building principles, okay. and we will come up with some recommendations and bring it to the board for their, for their approval or disapproval, um, and we'll just wait and see. I think, though, I have to say that uh, as an SAU, the school board has been very cautious with positions. We have uh, uh, reduced positions uh, in the budget uh, year after year. And in some cases, the board may have had the position held but didn't fill it. 
unless they had data to prove that we needed it. Let me give you an example. We had a kindergarten position that did not get filled when we had low numbers. The, fall, the, the position was left in there, never used, the money was returned to the town. This past year when we saw an increase up to 110 or 11 for kindergarten, that position was restored. The money was there, it wasn't a new position. So, I mean, the board has been very methodical in terms of deciding what they need and what they don't need. No, and I, and I understand that, but, and I just want to make one more point in this area. If this does not pass, what the public will be watching is, is they're going to find a way to sneak it in against, in other words, the public wants this position and they vote for the budget. That's why I really feel that, and, and look, this is your decision, not mine. A Warren article, I think, would have been more in order. I really do believe that. But that not being the case, if you have this position and it, and it falls down, then the public finds out, oh, we still funded it. Some of it. That's all I'm putting out there because we, as the chairman so eloquently said in, through the years and when he opened up this year, our job on the budget committee is to send a budget to the taxpayers of everything that we can feel comfortable with and that we are representing in every aspect of what we do is this really needed? Is this going to fly? Because we're just seeing on and on and on. But I, I'm glad you said what you said, and I, I understand, and you guys have done a great job in that. But I, I just want to put that out there as something always in our mind. That's all I have on that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Walbury. Mr. LeBranch. Yes. <clears throat> the position was established by the school, school board action in 2018-19 and partially funded in that year under the GROW grant. So how much... What's partially? So we got a fifty thousand dollar grant, and, uh, and the grant was pledged to cover the first seven. It, the position is not. This is more. This position is full year. The position that the board funded with the grants is only partial year because right. it didn't start. Um, so seventy four hundred was the first pile that came out of the grant, uh, which left uh, twenty eight thousand uh, that the district is the district is picking up um, through savings from attrition and uh, we, we have not yet billed the grant for everything that we may depending on how the budget is able to provide for the program otherwise it's a four year grant and, uh, and so the more that comes out of the grant this year the less money the grant has to do all of the other programs that it intends to do so going back to your question <clears throat> you know it, the grant may be able to help in subsequent periods there's no more coming because that was a one time dollar uh, but we have four years to spend that allocation, and there's a number of programming elements that they're trying to do with that GROW grant, growing resilience, uh, something wellness. So, And, and the reason, and, and it's funny, I've got to bring my good friend Mr. Barr in a sub, because the, the train we're going on, the, the, the philosophy and discussion has to deal with now we have a full-time position with benefits which don't go down. Those benefits a company, a retirement system, which, as you heard Rennie Cushing last night, is in a, a horrible shape. And we all should be right. very concerned about the costs that come back, as you are, to this community. So anytime somebody hears a new position, it's not just $44,342. It's what's on top of that. And I think that that's, and, and I've been very clear since I've come back on, the message this year from what I see in budget, it, to me, is wages, new positions, how that's going to affect the overall taxpayers. And so that's, to your point, that's why I brought that up. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Maureen. If I may, um, the question, Mr. Auburn, that you asked is, is it needed? Okay. I think this type of position has been needed for many, many years and never, ever dealt with. Uh, the middle school children, okay, you have, an, you have children on IEPs. They have a specialized area. There are certain people who deal with that. There are children on 504s. They also have certain people. These, these children in this category, to me, I could be wrong, but what I'm hearing is these are the children with emotional problems. These are the children that nobody gets to. They cause a lot of problems in the school sometimes. They're, they need to have some extra help emotionally. And I really think, especially in a middle school setting, Number one, this has been needed for many years, and I applaud you for putting it in there. Are you done, Mr. LeBranch? I'm Lebrant? done, thank you. Mr. LeBranch, are you done as well? Yes, thank you very much. 
I think the, the, the question was really around the idea of creating new positions um, with the facade of a grant paying for them mm -hmm. and then subsequently having to pull, pay the full vote through eternity I understand on that. a position in which the voters had no opportunity to voice their will on the matter. And is that, is that accurate? Uh, that's very accurate. Okay. And so, uh, Mr. Warburton's suggestion that perhaps it be a separate warrant article. Uh, I think so. Has merit on that basis, perhaps. Um, and Ms. Warburton, we could do something about it if you wanted to reduce that and thus inspire the school board to put out a warrant article on the question. Uh, that might be one thing that could be done here. I, I'd like to revisit this when they come back in two weeks. Is it two weeks? It's in January. January 9th. It would still give us time. Right. And, and if we're going to if we're going to do that, and I have no objection to doing that, right. since we have to deal with SEU 90 anyway on January 9th, then we should uh, probably hold off making any final vote on the budget warrant article tonight. That's correct. Okay. Is everyone okay with that? Yes. Any objection to that? I okay, object great. to it. You object to it. Okay. Mr. Okay. Frank, please state your objection. All right. I, have, I think that the budget is, is valid. Okay. I disagree with Mr. Warburton on several factors. Number one, when the board, the school board gets together and reviews these budgets. The question at hand at the moment. I'm re, I'm the question at hand at the moment that you're objecting to is whether or not we hold off our final vote on the budget until, until January 9th. No, That's the only question on we're dealing with tonight. Okay. So. And, and, and so, in order to overcome Frank's objection, we're going to need a motion. Uh, otherwise, his objection will stand. Do I hear a motion? I, I'd like to move. I mean, it, to me, it's unheard of in a first pass budget that we're going to pass it tonight, if that's what I, I'm understanding my fine colleague. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to make a motion that we don't make any final decisions on this. I mean, we're just reviewing this. We're asking questions and initial questions tonight that we do the final review in January as well as the warrant out. So your motion is to hold off making any decisions tonight until January 9th. I'm not ready. The rest to make of the SA 91 articles are That's available correct. to us. Do I hear a second? Second. Great discussion. All those in favor of not voting until January 9th, when the complete SA 90 ballot is known, raise your hand. Those opposed. Mr. DeLuca opposes. Everyone else is in favor, except for Mr. Neutral, who is neutral. Okay. Anything else on uh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. May I Moore. just ask a question that's relevant to what we were just, what you just said is fine. Agree uh -huh. 100%. With all the budgets, be it the school board, uh, the sanitary, the fire, the police department, everybody's, uh, what I've seen, it's generally stated like the, a salary of 45000 But if we just go through talking, it's not 45. Right. So is it possible we might be able to suggest in the future that we get the full cost of what it's like when you go on the airlines? Is it really 250 or do you have to pay for the seat? This, 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 you're only paying 500 bucks. So is, I'm asking a question to you, sir. Is so it basically possible what you're saying is you want the cost of the actual benefits and other wage-related expenses in the individual lines just where the salaries appear as well. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, well, it makes sense to me. It's something that I think I remember someone advocating six years ago. <laughs> uh, Couldn't it be you, could it? Absolutely. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yes, I, I, I think that that's a, a logical thing. It's probably uh, too late for t Too late for this year. For this year. year. Yeah. For next year we can. But uh, next, next year's budget committee will probably be more circumspect on that question and ask it in advance or request it in advance to be done that way. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any further questions on guidance services? Great. Health services. Any questions or comments on health services? No one? Well, I can't help but not ignore that 332% increase. Yeah. Ah. I realize that it's a small dollar amount, right, but... <laughs> the, um, we, we, have, uh, we have for the last three or four... <coughs> three or four, maybe five years, we have each year picked up the cost of the nurse contracted service who attends with our students yeah. uh, the environmental camp week away. Uh, and uh, and it, it didn't have a space in the budget. It just yeah, it did, under environment camp. 
Uh, it, that doesn't include, that's the admission, that's the admissions and costs of the trip. It didn't include specifically the nurse, which was not always a position that had to accompany the students. Mm -hmm. And so I have stuck the $1,500 cost of a nurse in this line for multiple years. This year we finally said <coughs> we, should, we should budget accordingly. And so the line has been, I increased the cost for the nurse and reduced the cost for the other elements of that account. And the net increase was twelve hundred and forty-five dollars. So let me get this straight: the nurse didn't previously go on the environment trip. Now she is going to go on the environment she trip. Went, is that right? It's not the nurse; it's a nurse. A nurse. Unrelated yeah. to us, it's some. Right. It's a contract we right. have to look for every year, but it hadn't been picked up as a part of the budget. It had just been paid for off budget every year. Not off paid budget, off by some other line item. Somewhere, somewhere else it. picked it up right, every so year. So you're simply being more transparent with yeah, the I, actual cost. Right. We really need to very show simple. this cost. simple, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Any other questions on this? Great, let's move on to related student services. So in my presentation before the summer, just so you know, this is all special ed as well. Right. Related I services saw. are all part of special ed and we're in that conversation. Yep, absolutely. Um, and we had a significant decrease here because we we had a retirement and the replacement came in a, a just far yeah. lower on the wage scale. I don't think uh, any questions. No, I, the, it was well explained. I am curious about related services, suggesting everything else is unrelated. But <laughs> <laughs> what is it related to? Related to the special, special education. So why don't students. we call it that in the future? Uh, only because that's the state. That's what the state that's calls it. No, no, oh, here. Handbook. Related. The related oh, oh, I see. I yeah, see. Related Using to the DRA. Amen. Yes, got sir. it. Yep. Got it. But. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to have to take a relative view well, of that forever. Well, I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate the perspective. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to improvement of instruction. Questions, comments under improvements of instruction? None? Well, I can't resist. Wages, uh, workshops, and seminars uh, uh, down. 12.5%. In-service training is down 28.6%. Uh, why are we decreasing our investment in improving instruction? So um, these are really important um, lines for us because it's all around training and professional development right. for our teachers. And um, I have been using federal funds, much as you uh, thought that that wasn't a good use for our position. It's a great use for us. We get it, uh, Title II, which allows us uh, money to Hampton, dedicated to Hampton, uh, to provide training and professional development for our teachers and staff, and that's how we use it. And because we have been successful using that, um, we reduce these lines in terms of the district's obligation uh, to those lines. So, you know, it goes back and forth. It's, it's kind of interesting with the grants. I'm not sure I understood that. Well, uh, let me say it again then. So let me, let me say it a different way. We okay. receive federal monies um, yeah. that allow us to provide professional development and training for our staff. Got and it. because we are getting those grants, we were able to reduce the town's obligation for professional development and workshops for our teachers. But all of your expenditures by a topic need to be recorded in your budget, right? That's what appropriation means. It doesn't matter the source of the money. I would say it a different way. The board looked at the lines, these two lines, and said, you haven't been spending that much. You don't need that much. And they reduced them. Now, that's, the a, that's the kind of answer this simple mind can uh, understand. The, but the reality is, to, to what the superintendent is, is explaining, is that we haven't used that much, we haven't spent that much in those lines. Yes. Because under our gross appropriation at the tail end of the budget, Yes. We have used federal dollars instead and haven't needed these local dollars. So, I actually had highlighted that as the probable answer. And, uh, but I, I see you just went a shade above what your actuals were yep. in terms of uh, the proposed budget. Um, and the same for curriculum work salaries is kind of a, is an overspend there this year. And uh, so you're increasing it by 37.5%. Curriculum work salaries. So curriculum work and salaries is um, during the during the summer, um, I uh, teachers work on curriculum, uh, especially in the new areas. This past year, we focused on uh, social studies and science. We're currently working on art, music, 
um, physical education, world language. So those teachers work uh, in the summer. It also gives me an opportunity and curriculum to bring in consultants if I need <coughs> it, if I need somebody who's going to help the teachers with specific kinds of uh, work that they're doing around curriculum development. It's a tool. It's an important foundation for our teaching. So this is improving uh, the curriculum in a specific topic area. That's right? correct. And this this coming year it will be. This coming year, um, in the, in this particular budget, uh, we're working on um, art, uh, music. Uh, we finished physical education and world language, uh, and library science. Okay, so next August, I guess you'll be doing that. I assume you do this in August. We do it in the summer. Yeah, the summer. When school's okay. so up. next summer right. you'll be doing those, those right. particular projects. And social sciences is already done. We have completed uh, social science. Great, so we can take a deep drill down on that subsequently yeah, and see and how it's been that's decided, right. Right? We finished, and we're okay. now just working on assessments. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this? No, thank you. Next is education media. Questions, comments? Mr. Warburton. I notice the salaries of the librarians at Marston and Academy seem to be much higher than the center. What does TBH mean at center? To be hired. To be hired. To be hired. We don't have a librarian. Uh, we will. We will have a vacancy there. We anticipate a vacancy there uh, come July one. Do you envision that a person applying for that's already in as another role? Perhaps, um, and as you salary, know, all, all positions need to be posted internally first. Well, I understand that, but 62 may not be enough, right? Yeah, yeah you see where I'm going with I, that. I, yeah, I have the, that's the, that's the, that's the block. That's the that's one. the body. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, no, that's all I have in that area. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. What does that's the body mean? I, I, the, the budget reflects the, the, the reflects the individual who we expect will fill that position. So you it's got to be posted. Oh no, it hasn't. They haven't been hired. But from my They've planning perspective, I couldn't put I couldn't put forty five thousand in there because I know I know I know I understand. I <laughs> I, I, I believe I know. You how believe I'm you know. Fill that, and I. So you have an expectation of a particular individual who will be a successful candidate That's for correct. this position. I, yes, I do. And you know that he, won't, he or she will not accept 45000 Is that what I'm hearing? Correct, because he or she's a certified teacher on the teacher salary scale. That's correct. So I had to okay. reflect So there. this is a custom-made position, essentially. <laughs> well, it's a position that's always, well, been, always there, been there. But it's always so been there, but this is how it will yeah. be filled next year. <laughs> it's already been. It's always been there. It's just that it's yeah. to be. Like, yeah, the pay is being we. We sculpted to fit a particular individual. No, because Marston and Libra, uh, the Hampton Academy are actually much higher. Yeah. So I'm not making a comparison understand. other than what the existing position. Yeah. So I'm clear on that, right, Nathan? Okay, I got it. Any other questions on uh, nope. educational media? Educational television. This is my big. Mr. LeBranch. $37,000, that's. That is um, that revenue. Come, you've, you've got it in the budget. You have to put it in there, of course. But that comes back to you from, from the, the franchise. Fees. Franchise. Fees. Fees. Yes. Thank you very much. That's all I had. My my question. Mr. My question is. So I, I'm on the same page here because in district wide, you have a person that takes care of all your. That's help. correct. Greg. So is this media coordinated, not Greg? No, this is not great. This is a This is the media. John? The, John. Yep. John Jensen. Okay, and John does the... Channel 13. And all the school events. All the school yes. events, concerts, uh, classroom uh, activities. Uh, he's been helping us with uh, building. I can tell you, and the quality of Channel 13 is 500 times better than the town Channel 22. And I have no idea why that is. The, the meetings are crisp. The presentations are crisp. All the stuff you have on there, I, I actually, you know, I'll sit up at 11 o'clock some nights. I have no life anyway, so I'll watch <laughs> some of these things and I'll Another look. But I'll tell you, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> love that. But Channel 22, the same franchise, and you, you got to like lean over. And I don't know if you've ever experienced, but I want to commend John because I, I've shared this with Mrs. Shepard and Mr. Shepard and the, uh, the other and Mr. Deluca. I, I think it's wonderful. I, I and the PowerPoints that you put on there. 
you can actually read them. And they're not in point, you know, three or four. So that's good. This is a this is very good. This is information to the public right. any time of day. Right. So <laughs> went on the website. So thank you. And, and I you remind you that it's all covered by franchise. Yes, yeah, it doesn't cost right. us any. We, we have to put it in, but right, you got right. it back. I know you're covered on channel twenty two, your, your school They covered on meeting, thirteen too. Yeah. The school board meetings. Right. Right, and then you replay them on thirteen. We we share back and forth. That, I mean, we that, send the. Is that true? That yes. Okay, that's true. And, but who's actually doing the uh, videoing, or the uh, copying of the video? Is John. it channel twenty two or channel thirteen? John. But he comes in because you have those meetings in this room, right? A lot of times. Right, the channel twenty two uh, films. They're here. They they take care of it. John doesn't operate with those um, the, the, right, the equipment in that meeting. room. So, so is it mo is it true that most of your meetings? School board meetings are held in this room? Yes. Most. Yeah, they all. And, and so, no, most, some are not. Oh, that's uh, right, yeah. And so all of those meetings that are in this room are done by Channel 22. Right, and so then... the compliment is more they directed to Channel 22. No, what I was talking about... Technicians in terms of the creation quality of the video itself. The fact that they're playing it on no, no. Channel 13 no. is... is uh, no, I didn't mention school board meetings. I'm talking about the programs well, that you are said put meetings. On, so you okay, period. the programs that are put on Channel 13... Mm -hmm. yeah. That quality is better than the town quality oh, of, course, of any meetings. Of course. That's what I'm yeah, saying. I agree with you because they're actually designed for TV. Yeah. That's correct. The meetings that Channel 22 yeah. does, like this meeting, is not designed for TV. Right. It's designed to do actual work. Yeah. All right. So, uh, any other comments on uh, educational television or questions for that matter? Great. Thank you. Everyone's favorite. Certainly mine is technology, so let us do technology. A lot of nice line items in there. Any questions or comments under technology? I might as well sw just swing, because I know big percentages are, are getting the attention. Well, no. I shifted don't, 20. Don't, don't. I, I need okay. to oh. uh, ask some questions. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, you've got internet access fees going up, you know, some amount. Yes, and I sir. noticed you have internet access fees elsewhere in the budget. Superintendent's office. Yeah, is that because of the physical location difference? Yeah. And, and, and because, if I might, we worked, we've worked really hard. I think it can dissipate now, but for the first handful of years, there was still a lot of lingering conversation about SAU 90 versus SAU 21. So as opposed to letting something like internet access fees be buried in technology, I, I kept it very identifiable in the SAU office because we were comparing mm -hmm. total costs of SEU 90 to what you had been spending with SEU 21 because I wanted to be mindful of not letting that element of the budget explode, which Spend. is what some people anticipated would happen. So uh, so you, you saw internet access, you will see internet access fees in the SEU because I still keep that element of it there. That was just, again, for transparency so that we could compare back against what our appropriation had been as a part of the multi-district SEU. And it's completely unrelated to the uh Lease of the fiber optic lines the cost of that? It is today. It is separate? We have a part of this. Um, the, the operation of the fiber optic is, is here, yes. Is we pay this. a lease for that, right? Um, yes, but, our, but it's small. Where is it? Is it in this It's in line? that line. That's all it's I want in that line. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you've also got um, software dash administrative which of course is different than software non-administrator. <laughs> but I see software in a lot of locations in the budget as well. So this is district-wide uh, <coughs> email server uh, 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 filtering, uh, you know, content filtering. Uh, this is uh, backup software, virus protection software. These are the column administrative as opposed to instructional software or or apps that are being used on the Chromebooks. That's not in this line. That's in the regular education line. They um, the principals on a building by building basis work those with grade. Sounds like infrastructure technology. This infrastructure, is infrastructure right? technology. Better, better, better nomenclature. Yes, sir. Um, and does it doesn't include the actual physical machine, does it? No. Machines, right? No, sir. Are you hosting that? Out, out there and many of those items man, many of the many of the software applications that drive us power school no, uh, like email the infrastructure stuff uh, uh, email yes it's a uh, it, you've got that machine out it's, there in the that's cloud a, that's being a, that's hosted a Google, for you, that's right? a Google tool now yes that's in the cloud so I, what are you using Gmail for that uh, at, Gmail is the the backbone yes okay. of our email wow. 
Yep, that's amazing. Did you know that Gmail, I mean, that Google is actually scanning everything that comes through their Gmail service and indexing it? Everything. Did you know that? Everything. I'll let you contemplate the privacy considerations of that. Uh, and so we're talking about the email server, you're talking about filtering. <laughs> What do you mean filtering? As in spam? You talking about email spam? Or? Well, that too. But but we under under the under SIPA, the Child Internet Protection Act, we have okay. to filter and protect. So it's blocking domains, basically. Yes. Okay. So we're going through some uh, some uh, uh, server inside the building. Is yep. that correct? Out okay. inside the firewall. It, well, it is the firewall. It right. Is part and of the firewall is located physically inside the academy, academy, right? Yep. Okay. I went through that a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. that, that I right. think you with me, uh, Mr. LeBranch. Uh, and so that's all still in play as we saw just a few years ago? Yes. Okay, great. I see your new technology equipment is down 100%. I mean, that's very impressive, but <clears throat> why? There's a lot going on, and the decision was that we would not, con we would not invest in new technologies and introduce new things in this year as we're opening launching and opening the new academy fully right. and working to avail ourselves of all the technologies that we have in that building and in the other schools uh -huh. uh, we would continue to replace inventory that has to be turned uh -huh. with the replacement line but we would pass on on introducing something new to the buildings in this cycle does this suggest we can see this number you know significantly increasing in subsequent years it, if we're looking at it from a percentage basis i would say yes Mm -hmm. Although I don't, I mean, I, I don't know that I don't, I don't expect that you'd see significant dollars. I just find it interesting. Your actual uh, spend is twenty over twenty-three thousand. Your budget was sixteen thousand. Right. Spend last year was twenty-three. Yeah. Budget this year is sixteen. Yeah. Budget for next year would be one dollar. One dollar. Nothing. I mean, the, the intent is not to. It just jumps out at me that you know. We're just delaying a future cost. You know, we're delaying a cost that should be borne now uh, into the future, in which we'll probably possibly be paying more. That's the nature of my question. So that's all I have on technology. Anyone else have any questions or comments, on Mr. Weber? I, I failed to bring up this before, and it will be you know the permeation through the rest of this budget. But again, for the public at home, there's a 1.75 percent raise in this budget for the two technology positions. Correct. So. The teachers are in their last year of the contract, so like collective bargaining units, if they don't get voted in, they don't get their raise. Just like the town, we need to say to the public, if this budget fails, the non-union raises are still going to be gotten. Is that correct? Is that a fair statement? No. It's not? I wouldn't say that, no. I mean, I think that's a conversation the board would have to... There's no, con there's no contract, there's no commitment that says that the non-union staff would be entitled to... Let me rephrase the question. Right. The, the wage increases um, for non-union personnel. Correct. No. Non Are they in the default budget? No. No. They, no, they can't be. They're not. Well, that's, that's uh, admirable. I agree. Yeah. Admirable. Well, yes. it has to be. Well, no. What, it what, can't be in the... No, no. What I'm saying is <laughs> we have another Can counterpart... Can I put <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have we another counterpart to this town budget that people get their raises no matter if it's default or not in non-union. That's my point. Oh, so oh. if you're saying that, I'm tickled pink because oh. that tells me, once again, that you're going on with the bonus say. So I just I needed to ask that question that we're not going to hear in the middle of next year. Oh, the school board says, okay, well, we didn't, the voters didn't vote raise, but we're going to give you this raise. Okay, but I would say they, they are at liberty to do that if they can find, if they can make sacrifices elsewhere and do that. If they can make sacrifices in the budget, they could, but I. But it's not a fait accompli. There's nothing that says they can or, or that they would or will. Well, you, know what I mean? look, you don't need to, to no. explain the town budget. Not, no, 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 no. I'm I'm talking about yeah, yeah, I understand, but what you're saying, and I want to be clear in simple terms, that you're giving raises out in this year, and those raises, non-union, I'm only talking non-union, yep. those raises are not reflected in the default budget. Correct. Okay, so therefore, if the... Uh, default budget wins the day, so yep. to speak, 
then there's no appropriation for those no raises. For right. However, we all know the governing board can shift money around. Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That was my That comment. differs from the town, which is why I think Mr. Walburton was raising it. That's not the way the game is played on the town and side. The town side. Right. It's different. And so he's just highlighting I'm sorry. there's a distinction between you two. And he absolutely. thinks what you're doing is more laudable than what the town is doing. Yes. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Okay, great. Sorry, my reaction was I'm, I'm only doing what the law tells me. Yeah. Law, so. it's, it's, <laughs> it's more transparent. Right, which is suggestive of what the town is doing. You know, yeah. so. okay. But thank right. you uh, for explaining that. I just want to make that's all I have in this. Okay, are we done enjoying technology? Anybody else? Moving on to support services. Questions, comments on support services? I have a question. Mr. Gore. Bonus pay going down. It's like being eliminated. Minus. <coughs> Pardon me? It's being eliminated. No bonus pay at all in the future? For anyone. For anyone. Right. So that was kind of my question, too. Do you anticipate no one will be meritorious next year? Uh, I would disagree with that statement. There's plenty of um, uh, incredible, excellent, ab above the norm work that's completed in this district. But again, what my opening remarks were that the school board took this budget very seriously and were looking for ways in which they could reduce costs in order to achieve their goals. If you go back to the goals, especially the one on social emotional learning, they were willing to sacrifice some things in the budget for other things. and. Um, and so one of the things that this year will 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 depart this budget is the is the merit raise. The merit raise was based on this, the performance of those people, and I was responsible for recommending those merits to the school board. And uh, um, but but again, this year, and I'm I'm only going to talk this year, David. I, maybe that they will decide to bring it back. I'm I'm not I don't know that. I don't want to answer for for um, for our board. But mm -hmm. this was a way to achieve some uh, uh, way to get to what they really wanted to get to. Let me follow up a little Thank bit you. on that, because uh, again, the confusion with the town. The town has a merit line as well. You use it as a form of bonus, right? I mean, if someone did an exceptional job in a particular year, you give them a, a one-time payment for that, uh, a bonus, right? That's what your merit line item That's was correct. For. I mean, okay. our merit is- The town line item, is vastly different. It is never used for that purpose. It's used as a, as, as a way of uh, basically giving pay in perpetuity. So Pretty if you much. work great in one year, you get you know, 100 years worth of pay for that. That's what uh, we Th so Those that's merit very raises different. to no, those. I'm, I'm just drawing a distinction because this committee sees merit pay right. uh, from two sources, and they mean totally different things. Okay. So I want the committee to be aware of that. There's a clear distinction that you should have in your mind on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on uh, support services? Okay. Uh, moving on to uh, <coughs> the Board of Education, which I mean is the school board, I guess. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> Any questions, Mr. Walburton? Okay. The big question that I have, and, and, and by the way, it's no way to be saying what people get paid, but it's just curiosity to me. So if I look at salaries, district offices, is that the school board members? It yes. also includes uh, and there the treasurer, others. the clerk, the moderator, and the recording secretary. For 24, 3, 4, 5? Right. Yes, sir. What's the treasurer make it? I could uh, go look at them. It's 30, right. 3320 bucks. And what's the school board reps pay? Right 3695 each. Well worth it. Th okay. 300, That's 300. what I need to hear. So the, the, the treasurer is in there. And who else? I'm sorry. Uh, the, the clerk and the moderator, 300 bucks That's each, fine. and the That's all I need. secretary. That's all I need to know. Thank and you. And the school is your treasurer. Not to take any income for the last three years. Ellen does treasurer. Same She's treasurer of everything. Right? She does wanted, everything. Just wanted to get clear on that. Any Thank other you. questions? I, I didn't Maureen. hear what you said, Mr. Tulica. I said in the school board elected not to take any increases. Thank you. Again. Any other questions? Again, they were trying to achieve their goals. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Uh, dues and fees for the school board, $7,005. Mm. First of all, the dues is for? 
the name of your lobbying group, right? The school board lobbying. They're group. New Hampshire School Board Association. Right. Uh, we also have a um, opportunity to. They help us with policies, and so we have a policy subscription. So when new law passes, new legislation, they help us. the The, the legal team will give us a draft policy, and we use that to help uh, review our mm. policies. And then we belong to NESDEC, New England School um, Council, and this council provides support around professional development. It provides support around enrollment and projections uh, and special education. Um, it's, it's a resource for our school board and for our district, for me. So you're paying two entities with this line? Right? That's correct. Okay. So, base, so basically, to your point, go ahead. Um, your actual seventy-seven eighty-six, but you're budgeting seven thousand. Is there a reason why the dues is going down? Am I misreading that somehow? I the uh, there was another fee. There was another <coughs> fee unrelated to those two those two entities that uh, I can't recall. The the. Uh, Is there a fee associated? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's an, there was another fee. fee. So dues and fees by budget uh, were intended for school boards and NESDEC. Last year there was another fee that was paid that categorically needed to be in a fee account. So it got charged there. Is it, is that so? I, uh, was it? Was that, I have a, maybe, maybe I have the answer. Nathan? I'm sure you can get that information yeah, to us. Yeah, by I can find that. Right? Just look in the actuals. I just don't have that detail. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. Um, and so the 7500 is actually a projection of those two entities' payments, right? Yes. And is that detailed further down these pages? I didn't it's in the pages. To yep. Okay, thank you. I Good. won't bother with that then. Yeah. Any other questions, Mr. Walberg? So basically, and, and, and this is the, the, the theme we've been following through, we will continue with the town as well. So your the answer school board is basically your NHMA. NHSBA, I think it is. No, no, I'm saying in relation. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. Your lobbying group is the same as the town uses for NHMA, the same, not the same organization, but basically doing the same thing. Is that true or not? I have to say, I guess, I, I, I never I, characterized I, it as a lobby. I don't, yeah, lobby. it, it isn't, is but they do, sense, a lobby. they do go they lobby do at yeah, the okay. legislature on NHMA behalf does. of school boards, right. yeah, especially when there's laws that are being proposed, as you know, and uh, resolutions in the, in the House that they needed to testify on behalf of the membership. So, yes, but it far exceeds that. They have workshops on all kinds of um, issues, right to know, uh, was just recent. They have a whole, um, uh, they doing webinars so that school board members can listen in on information. The latest one was on data security, which is a huge topic for us. So they're providing that service. If the board has a question, they're free to call um, to the New Hampshire School Board Association, uh, talk to their executive director or their, uh, their legal um, counsel. So well, I, I just want to. It's a resource. I, for I them. just want to once again this theme, and, and in fairness, it, and I appreciate what the school board is is saying on this. However, you have prided yourself since you've come here, and just as the town with the great leadership we have, and you yourself come from a state government position that knows all this stuff, and you do a great job. My question is this. If we have all this great expertise in town, why do we need to pay anybody lobbying? Because every, and, and, in fit, and this is a compliment to you, but I watch all your meetings. And I constantly hear, I went to this hearing today. I went to that hearing today. I spoke to this state, state legislator. This is the same concept I try to get across to the town, and you never will with this town government now. But with you, what I'm saying is, why do we keep telling the public we've got the great, listen, I'm going to compliment the principals with a minute, two who I have to know for the last 35 years. Why do we keep telling people we have this great expertise, but then we pay $7,000 for this advice? Am, am I missing something here? I, and it, just a question. It, it's not just advice. Where is that question directed to? The superintendent. Thank you. Well, I'm going to say what Frank just said. It isn't just about advice. I mean, it is... I can they can get a legal opinion, but it's far more than that. It's 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 their training, their development as school board members. For instance, when Frank was new and Andrea and Les, they went to workshops on the role of the school board and how, and what their role was and what kinds of 
um, the regulations and rules that they have to follow. So it's that kind of support that we have from them. I, I will have to make a comment. I don't think there's anybody that lives in this community for 50 years that would ever say that Chairman Shep and his wife are new. I think, if anything, what they brought to the table, they know. And, and I appreciate what you're saying, but i got to tell you, we talk outside of here, and I talk to regular people. And I want to support, and to Maureen Buckley, who was an excellent teacher, and I agree with that position, by the way. It's the way we're going about it. I just, the chairman has been a really good chairman. He stated these things in public that we've got to be able to say, are we, are we in need of these sort of things? Anytime I see a membership dues, I, I, my gray hair, I pull out like five of them. Because it just seems to me it's another lobbyist. You've got four people on your school board, especially four, and I'm no difference to a good finance guy, Frank, that are retired teachers and one is still working. You've got some great experience right there that know these things. Um, and it, the, the thing that's permeated throughout all this budget, you know, you talk about this intervention thing. You sat here and talked about the school resource officer and how they handle emotional needs of kids. Instead of going to a teacher or a principal, they're going to come to the, the uh, police officer. We have so many resources now, it just seems to me we're adding more and more and more with opinions. And before you know it, we're going to be in a position where, oh, by the way, do you know there's 15 layers between the teacher and administration? I, I just, I see that happening, and I hope you understand where my point is on this. I think you guys do a great job as it is, and why are we having all these lobbyists telling, because they're not paying the taxpayers' bills in this town, and it just hit me this year when I see the, uh, and, and, and Chairman Jones knows exactly where I'm going with this or, or have gone because of the fact that, you know, we have organizations within the town that we can't, nobody can talk to. And it's like we're paying money. Your school board can call, which is great, and I think it's wonderful. But why do we keep saying we have all this, we have, I mean, Dr. Costas in the back, first, one of the first PhDs I think we had principals in years. It's like maybe I'm missing something, but it just seems to me that a lot of these things we don't need. I will absolutely concur with your comments about the experience and knowledge that we have. I, for, to, to a point, our school board is very articulate, but every single day there is <coughs> new law and new um, rules that come out that need attention. Let me give you an example. How about the voucher bill? We all understood the voucher bill, but we needed to have people who would spearhead an effort to protect public schools. The New Hampshire School Board Association did that on behalf of the school board members in this state. My association, Nathan's association that we belong to, the New Hampshire School Administrators Association, did the same thing because we were trying to protect public school. When we wanted to bring Medicaid into schools, everybody knows what Medicaid is, right? Kids with special ed, they get this Medicaid money that can be for reimbursable expenses. On, on behalf of the school districts, the New Hampshire School Boards Association, the New Hampshire School Administrators Association went and fought so that all kids are now eligible for Medicaid, not just special ed. Now, Nathan and I go and testify. Don't get me wrong. We're up there. We go. We want to be... We want to represent our community and make sure that Hampton's needs are met. But they're doing that kind of work on behalf of our district, and I think that's valuable. I, I, I can't, when they wanted to change the tenure law, when they, all those things, the, our board knows those things, Brian. They are very articulate. And we spend, one of the things that Andrea likes is we update on legislation, legislative uh, rules and new rules and RSAs. That's important for us and it's important for them. But I can't be in Concord every day, nor can Nathan, and nor can our school board members. And I think they do a hell of a job of uh, protecting the interests of public schools. And seven, it's 7,000 uh, bucks. I understand what you're saying, uh, but it's a great resource for our school board, and I think they need it. You know, it's an interesting uh, problem, I think, because uh, we have elected state legislators. Yes. Who are supposed to represent all of us and all of our interests. And then you have these lobbyists that go up there to tell them how to think or act or whatever, <coughs> maybe offer them some campaign assistance in doing so um, or whatever. So you got the people who Absolutely say. Absolutely not. So Neither so one of those organizations say, Kathleen, offer Kathleen, any money Kathleen, to any other Kathleen, legislator. I have the floor now. I understand that. So but, let me have but, the floor. But, Kathleen? No one Your interrupted information you. needs Kathleen, to be correct. No one interrupted you. Now, 
You have lobbyists. What was the example that you used, I believe, was Medicare for all, all Medi the children? Medicaid to Medicaid schools. for all the children. Yeah. So Medicaid to I'm schools. I'm sure there was, there was one or more lobbyist groups up at the State House arguing to get rid of Medicaid entirely, uh, deny it to most kids. I mean, so you got lobbyist groups up there uh, arguing one side or trying to induce the state legislature to go one side. Where's the other side represented? Well, basically it's being represented by these lobbying groups, okay? Mm. And so there's some degree of, of balance in the so-called debate, right? And that's the goodness, isn't it? I hope so. Yeah. The, the distinction between, and I think this is where you're going, Brian, the distinction between those lobbyist groups who are arguing about getting rid of Medicaid for some children and all that other stuff, is that those lobbying groups are not paid by force. They're not being paid via tax via forced taxes to be funded. And the lobbying groups that Brian's talking about are being paid by forced collection of taxes. And there's the distinction. And it's, it's just a, it's the nature of the way our legislative system works statewide, federally, and, and arguably locally as well at times. But that is the nature of the beast, isn't it? Um, it really will come down to, you know, weighing you know, whether or not we're getting value for what we're paying for, not the mere fact that we're paying for it right. or have to pay for it. It is important that there should be lobbyists at all because our, our, our elected representatives are supposed to look out after all our interests. If they're doing their job, they wouldn't need lobbyists. So the argument goes in the simplest form, right? But that's not the case. And it has never been the case mm -hmm. from the day of the, of the beginning of this country, or perhaps politics itself. So uh, we had enough say on the lobbying group Thank you. Okay, I do have a question on legal expenses. Um, your actuals are, you know, like twenty-five hundred dollars, and you're budgeting twelve thousand um, dollars. Th this year, we are, we will uh, entertain uh, negotiations with our teachers association. So okay. that money is there too. So in this case, is a, just in case. This is a bob for union negotiation costs. That's great. Right. Got it. Any other questions on Board of Education? No, thank you. Uh, can I just oh, quick, go ahead, Ms. Walker. having been involved with several negotiations, and I understand that you have a school board representative that is involved with, is, is the, uh, help me out with the word I'm trying to use, uh, the appointed member to deal with. It, mm -hmm. Was it you or Andrea? Who was it? No, it's not me. It's uh, Andrea? It, it was you for It was me with the paralegal. So you, deal, you deal directly with but I'll say Sean Tierney just for the sake. So do you deal directly with that person or is it, there's no other outside person? Uh, I can't answer to the question of the teachers, but when it I'm was- I'm talking about the, the teachers. So I can tell okay. you that this cycle, we just did SESPA and we had money budgeted because we always stand prepared to bring in legal support. But in this case, Jessica and Frank and I were our negotiating team and SESPA brought a half a dozen, there were half a dozen of them, and, <coughs> and, we, and we did really well. The teachers' negotiations in the eight years that we've been here have, have been, the spokesperson has been an attorney that we've hired to represent, and the teachers have brought the UNISERV director or some other representative, UNISERV being the, 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 NEA. the NEA, the, the union, um, statewide union support. So, we keep dollars in there, but we continue to work towards pulling off negotiations without expending that. Well, I like hearing that because, and as a compliment to Frank, I would hope you'd utilize, continue to utilize his expertise in that. Because here's, here's the other thing that taxpayers look at. It's like, and you know, that's been my theme song for years. And all, I mean, we've got all kinds of uh, people we pay to negotiate, and what are we saving in the long run? So the, the, the the teachers are just so wonderful here, and the staff in general, and the, and the whole town. You know, I went to Catholic schools. All my kids went to public schools here. And I'll tell you, I love the education all the way up. And, and so I, I've been a big proponent of it. But the reason I say that is, you know, we look at outside counsel, we look at negotiation counsel, and we look at labor counsel and everything else. But I think you guys have done a good job, from it seems, through the years in making sure that those relationships continue which I know they have in a, in a good way. And I'm glad to hear that Mr. DeLuca was involved uh, in the most recent ones. We'll, we'll get to that later, but, okay. but thank you. On to SAU services. Questions, comments on SAU services. Mr. 
Mr. Walker. Well, and my comment is strictly for the, line, the first line. I just want to be clear. Um, these SEU administrators, I assume the 254 are you and, and uh, yeah. superintendent. Okay. So you just signed a new th three-year contract, right? So I would assume that in your three-year contract, there's a raise put in there every year for that contract? No. They, That's unusual. The, um, the first year is in this line, and any subsequent year will have to be a conversation that the board has an award the same way we just did the 175 this year. And so it's... So your raise that you just got commence July 1? It will. Next July 1? Yep. Okay. And so there wasn't ensuing years for raises that are finite. Dude, that's very, that, that is a difference because what We've that does is, is, in other words, you're giving you a contract. Neither of us have for the duration of the time, in the time we've been here, we've never had a contract that that proposed or that that stated a dollar amount other than the base. You were getting this much for this year. Right. Anything so, beyond that, you'll have to. And going back to the chairman's point, so in ensuing, so this is including a, a general raise for each of you. Yes. Not counting, and it would be the board's choosing, obviously, based on an annual performance review that they they tweaked out or whatever. Okay, I, that was my big question because I'm saying, and good congratulations, by the way. I mean, you've done a great Thank job you. here. I Believe me. And so you get a three-year contract. Gee, when I was doing contracts this town, it was, it was a, a vetted. Remember when we did the town? It was so you had a raise. that So it didn't matter if the budget. I mean, in fairness to you guys, because you, you're employed here under a contract, in this case, the school board. But that's fine. You, you answered that question. Um, the only other, and, and let me just ask this one more question. Because, you know, there was a debate several years ago when we went to SAU 90. And at the time we were paying SAU 21, $394,000, I believe, and don't hold me exactly to that. The total District 90, SAU 90 cost to the taxpayers, as we, if we add the proposed, which this all comes under your office, yes you have, am I right in saying it's 454,000, is that correct? The only thing that's missing from that right now would be the benefits related to the staff in those lines because there's no benefit lines in that section. Those are all later in the budget. So I've got it, and I have an analysis somewhere. I didn't bring it, okay. and I haven't updated it in, in the last two years, I think. But every year, I took this, added in the benefits, and I took the 423000 and whatever that was the last year payment to 21, and I've taken 21's increases that the joint board has approved every year, and I've scaled that to compare our all-in in 90 to that all-in that you would have been paying. And we had not, two years ago when I last updated, we hadn't yet hit that number. We hadn't overshot it. So I, I, and I'd be happy to go back, resurrect that update well, for a couple of years because that was a, again, I go back to that transparency thing. I kept everything SAU in this line because I thought it was important every year to somebody. The last couple of years, I haven't kept it up. Well, there. absolutely, but I think it's important, and this just an offer to Mr. DeLuca and, and Mrs. Shepard in the audience. I think it's important to, much like we have quarterly updates in town, or where you have legislators come in, or people, and in, in, in a great efforts again to our chairman, who has really been good at through the years at drilling down. I think it would be good PR-wise to continue to tell the public what a great deal that was to have our own SAU 90 because people asked you know they talked but was it you know was it worth going that road and it's going to come back with as the chairman always says with facts and and I think it would be good not now I mean but you know maybe in the ensuing months in the spring and summer fall but thank you for that and that's all the questions I have to say. I guess I would the one thing that I would offer just the the I'm a business person and would never be a fan of decentralization generally. Right. Centralizing <coughs> and, and economies of scale are, are found in. But in this case, <coughs> even if the dollars are equal, your equal dollars are buying 100% of us and the rest of the SAU team that's working in the district. And in a multi-district, which I came from, having served at Exeter for a decade before I came, you never can say that you get 100% of the superintendent or the business administrator or anybody. And so even if the dollars are relatively equal, you're still getting 100% of the attention, which I think had to be some part of what drove those who were passionate about the... Okay. Is you know, your title, can I just ask for my record, what is your, is your title assistant superintendent or are you business administrator? What is it? Assistant superintendent for, for business. 
Assistant Superintendent for Business. But that's, oh, that's very interesting. interesting. Assistant, I'm just writing that down. Thank you. I just wanted to know that. So when I address you, I'll know the same. No, no, no. Listen, Assistant I, Superintendent. Nathan, give me your card. <coughs> any, any other questions? Uh, that wasn't in the budget. Cards were not in the budget. Those going to be donated, right? Those have to be donated. <laughs> oh, Vista Print does a really nice. Mr. LeBranch. Okay, we're still under SAU services. So um, one of the things that will go away next in this budget next year is that you're going to move back from Scott Road back to the Marston School. Is that correct? That's the plan. I'm at right right now right now they're yes. kind of the plan. Yeah. And so then the cost of renting so Scott the, Road will go away. The cost of renting isn't here. Oh, it's in another set. Oh. No, well, what, what am I looking not, at? We're not budgeting. We're not budgeting for that for right. rent. Oh, that's right, because you're already done that. Yep. Right. Okay. Because under um, under contracted services, which is in this budget, two hundred dollars next year. I know. Well, so it went from we, actual thirty-four thousand six hundred and seventy-four, right. which I thought was perhaps the rent, because there's the rent, a note on there. That the says, rent has been there, yes. But moving forward. They would have to scramble if we choose to stay. Because well, we that's didn't put the, what we that's didn't put the point I'm making correct. is that yep. that thirty-seven six seventy-four eighty-nine. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. That's it. Any Thank other you. questions, comments on SAU services? <coughs> Nathan, uh, software, software, software. Yeah. There's three of them in here. Uh, and uh, you know I love that stuff. And there's an internet access again. Yep. So yeah. again, this is SAU, so keeping it yeah, keeping it honest. So let me frame my question. Yep. <coughs> you got software license and you have financial software support. And you got financial software. Oddly <coughs> enough, financial software is a dollar, which is basically not there. Right. So Because we own a product. I don't understand these labels. Why are we why I mean what is the software license versus software support briefly? I mean are we paying what software are we paying for? This is so, administrative software, presumably. Yep. Yeah, so we have a disaster recovery and continuity backup service that we pay for out of the out of the software line. We also now pay for uh, a free and reduced lunch online application service mm -hmm. that families can use to uh, on their mobile phone, etc. And our substitute management software is. Uh, for substitute dialing and calling and setting up substitute teaching positions, those are all paid for out of the software license line. Mm -hmm. The financial so software line, financial software only with a buck, that was where you charged initially the purchase of your financial software that we used to manage the accounting of the district. We don't really, long run, I guess there's no reason to keep that with a dollar in it other than someday you might have to make a significant in uh, investment in something else if things changed I, I don't see it in the near term for sure and then the support is an annual service and support to maintain that accounting software that you purchased once upon a time and what do they do in terms of maintaining the software there are regular updates and patches which software developers are always uh, updates enjoying. of the software or is there yes. is there reference data that gets updated as well uh, they do have a significant online resource in mm -hmm. terms of uh, professional development, training, videos, uh, webinar, uh, webinars, etc., and data, uh, what do they call it, knowledge, a knowledge base uh, for uh, error, errors that you might run into, challenges you might have. Um, and, um, would, your software, would your financial software continue to work if you did not pay uh, the so, uh, financial software support? Uh, I'm not suggesting yeah, that we shouldn't no. pay it. I'm just asking a question. The, the software in the, the basic functionality would clearly continue to work. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's, w, all wanted, that's all I wanted. W2 I'm, I'm not suggesting to anyone yeah, we no. cut that, okay? I'm just wanting to get an understanding of the how things we, are working, and that tells me everything I need to know. Okay. okay. Anything else on SAU services? Thank you. School administration. Okay. Questions, comments? Mr. Walberg. Well, I'm going to start off, and in fairness again, and start off with a compliment. And I, I, I don't say this lightly, and, and I'm going to commend David O'Connor and Lois Coster to start off with. Um, they have both been involved with my children in education in this town for a long time. And um, I think my oldest daughter, the first graduating class from Marston, right, David, was you, principal, and Lois took over. And, and Mr. Lannon, great job at the center school. 
it's important to know, and, and you know, you people have heard me say this, I'm going to say it again, when I hear everybody in town, oh, people are leaving this town that work here. They don't want to stay here. Well, this is a perfect example of the years' experience that people have, have stayed in this position. And I, I, I appreciate their reports. I especially want to commend Chairman Shepard because the way he has conducted school board meetings and the report f sections of those meetings, you're, you know, it, it's just wonderful. They, you guys ha give your, I mean, the, the school board gets the reports and the principals. They don't have to get up for an hour and a half and talk. And I think, just think the snippets of great information from each of the schools that come forth is terrific. Um, I just had a, a, another comment, and, and I, you know, I'm going to look at people like Nancy York and others. I, I, for the life of me, you know, the best, the best people that you have in your schools are the people who are doing uh, the assistant hello, right? I mean, so I look at some of their salary, uh, and, and I'm like, wow. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I <laughs> That position to me deserves to look at. I think the, every one of these assistants do so much all the time. Twenty. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And the last thing I'm going to mention is, um, and maybe David can answer this. When you look at five thousand, when I look at five thousand, you put the workshops and seminars under a total instead of by school. It's under total. So. If a principal goes to a workshop or seminar with teachers, is that the same? Is that what we're talking about, or just for themselves? Just for themselves. Although it could be, it could be. It depends. It depends. Okay. So yeah. there are the. Yeah. I'm just it's curious because you have yeah. we've had those, and and, right. and I know they do a great job. But I, the administration in all of these schools, I, I have been more than impressed. I, I well, I, I and, and like I said, I've known Dr. Coster and David for many, many, many years, and. Uh, I just think they add so much value to this community, and, and, and I'm very impressed with Mr. Lannon, too. So, great job on those. I, oh, have, I have no further questions on that. Any other questions or comments on school administration? Uh, course reimbursement down 50%, workshop seminars down 33%. We begin to see a pattern of cutting back on um, education among staff and teachers as a means of getting the budget as low as possible. Um, dues and fees are also in here. Uh, I assume there's another lobbyist group. This is, what's the name of that lobbyist group? If it does exist. This is not a lobbyist group. Okay. This is the Principals Association, which supports our principals uh, via uh, workshops uh, <coughs> and, and, and support if they need it. They often bring uh, principals together. They share ideas. They have meetings. Uh, presentation so it's um, do they support legislation yes of course they get involved in it but they're not considered a lobbyist group by some they're considered a professional association <laughs> by some okay great any other questions or comments on the school Should administration they, well, Was that huh? I just want to say that any uh, well-respected community, school community, their principals and their teachers belong to professional organizations. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's necessary that you belong. That's all I'm going to say. Just, just a note, no one's challenging that. Right, that's okay. good. And our teachers that. belong to their association also. But they do yeah. support legislation. And Maybe. some people would interpret that as a lobbying group. But in any case, it doesn't matter. We're just playing with the words at this point. Uh, on to, uh, oh, excuse me, there's more to the buildings. On to buildings. Right. Questions, comments on buildings? I uh, Mr. Walbert. I, well, I'm going to compliment again, and I'm going to embarrass him a little bit, but back in the early 90s, uh, Keith Lassard was very instrumental in the creation of, well, many of us were on the Marston School Edition Committee, because Keith saw back then, and he was not, it was shortly before he became facilities manager, uh, always involved with getting the best within a community and, and always, Keith always has that planning aspect which is so needed. And so I say that because he started and others this program of these the school enhancements. We did it with Marston. Um, Keith and I worked together in 1998 to put off Route 1 so that we could do center school, the first edition we did. And then we all worked in 2004 to get the winter kind of after we'd done the auditorium, we did the whole, you know, edition over. 
and now we're at the Academy. So I, I really appreciate the work that Keith and his team has done because, you know, another feather in his 20-year cap here that, you know, this summer is going to culminate and, and certainly with all your principals and, and especially David has been in the trenches with the Academy and it's a very exciting time and, and the administration has been be, behind this. What a culmination as facilities manager for Keith it must be because he has intricately been involved with every other single addition in knowledge in school so that he brings that <laughs> knowledge to to the schools and I know you know that but I, I wanted to specifically commend him to Thank you, Brian. We're very, very fortunate to have you. Any other questions or comments? I just want to, don't want to miss the opportunity to tell you that the custodian position that is requested is here. Yes. And the salary yeah. 37856 is accompanied by $15,786 in, in health, dental, and, and uh, taxes that related. $53,642. Thank you. Does that include also retirement? Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Questions, comments on building? <coughs> I would note that our custodians were paying almost a half a million dollars for custodians. 451000 plus, right? That's the actuals. We got budgeted 479000 10.2% increase. Is that all pay our salary raises? They have a... The all of that 10 point they, have, they have a step. Step. Yes. Uh, I did... There was a minor... So you're saying that's, <coughs> that's a union contract? No. No, it's just no, they just have a, a step and scale... Uh, that is, uh, it's been in place for a long time, and, mm. and so a new step and scale that well, is a not scale, a union a scale contract. Steps, it's not, it's not a union, so it doesn't carry the, it doesn't carry due process. It doesn't carry the weight of a of a collective bargaining agreement. Right. It's just a scale of uh, of wages that that we just a practice that we just automatically do. Uh, yes, sir. We. It honors it honors experience and, and recognizes. Uh, uh, years of experience in the position and is this a really policy or something or is it just a practice a, a custom I guess a custom might not be a might not be an okay, inappropriate description all right so we're paying uh, close to a half a million dollars for custodians plus we have a facilities manager at uh, 80 close to 82,000 right can can I ask a question no you don't have the floor <laughs> so am I correct on that? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, Mr. Chairman. Um, heating fuels up 67 percent. Sorry, heating fuel. Yeah. So the heating fuel uh, itself, I didn't change the, I uh, didn't increase the cost of the commodity, but our delivery charges coming from Unitil's Northern Utility, the gas division, have skyrocketed. And do you expect uh, a significant adjustment once the remodeling is done? We're hoping so. We've left we've left the consumption level, the consumption side flat. Right. We have a lockdown contract for the for the commodity. Uh, we're hoping that the efficiencies will offset the. Which are supposed to be considerable, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And furniture. So the school board spent a significant amount of time talking about the furniture budget, the inventory turn. Uh, and uh, and they they looked for a number and and the challenge the challenge for us in responding was again you can't you quit you can't reasonably budget for as much as we might want or need to to make the changes as quickly as they want the Hampton Academy project will not replace all of the furniture in the building it was never intended to our intent was to was to replace about 25 percent of the furniture in the building and to chase an inventory turn of yeah, for the seventy five percent. And so the board made the decision to increase that line by ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars to begin that process at the academy first. Right. So we can anticipate uh, that this is a direct result of the remodeling that we need this new furniture and we're gonna be doing needing this new furniture <coughs> for the next five years, I think you say. Is that the plan? There's no long-term designation yeah. for that at all. This was just this year as we move hmm. into the new building. I thought in I heard August. Nathan say, you know, for the next five, was it 25% of the next four years? Oh, no, it was simply that that the other 75% that was not being replaced as a part of the project right. would enter into a, or continue in the inventory term process to be addressed over time. Okay, thank no you. No specifics, but yes. Thank you very much. I've exhausted my time on this topic. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Bazaluka. 
Nate, can you tell us how many custodians we have on staff total and what the average salary is? Sure. I mean, there, uh, there are three custodians that work um, at Center School, four that work at Marston. There are currently four that work at the Academy. That's 11. We'll add a 12th, uh, and their average is right about uh, $40,000. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the buildings? Grounds, questions, comments? None? I see uh, you overspent on one more in there. I mean, what's going on? We had a lot of rain. Uh, I don't know if you've okay. noticed that. And as a result, the grass Did grew. Did you have some extra seed as well? It has to do more mowing. I, wow. That's the best answer I can give you. And when it grows high, you mow it. Seriously, is this rain? I mean, because well, think about it. You didn't adjust the budget, even though you overspent it this time, is what I was curious. We, uh, we, so our new forecast, right? I okay, got it. That's right. No problem. Be dry. Moving on to vehicle expenses. There's only one line on there, so I suppose it's only up 75%, so who would have a question on that, right? Any questions or comments? No? Moving on to student transportation. Questions, comments on student transportation? Do I hear any? I see none. Moving on to employee benefits. Questions, comments on employee benefits, Mr. Moore? What's unemployment, C-O-N-T? Contributions. Yeah. And that's down nicely 24 percent but we are we're not we're not an employer that appreciates much in the way of uh, layoff or, or or departure you know it's uh, we, we work hard to make good hires good. so we don't have a whole lot of terminations that good to know yes. <laughs> thank you sir any other questions or comments on employee benefits let's move on to debt service Questions, comments on debt service? <coughs> I just can't let this slide by. I want the public to have a, a clean, a clean, simple explanation. We're going to be paying annually about a million and a half dollars in principal and interest payments, so-called debt service, on the remodeling of Hampton Academy yeah. until the day I die, and therefore even <laughs> after that, right? <laughs> Are you planning to die shortly, or? I'm planning to die eventually. I was like, <laughs> can we have a time frame on that? No, you can't. <laughs> that's, that's not but I can assure you this, Mr. DeLuca, as a member of the school board, you should know, all things that are alive today will die. And that's 20 years? <laughs> I plan to live for the next 20. I just want you to know that. 25, that's right, 25. Yes, sir. So a million and a half dollars a year is principal and interest payment, so-called debt service. Yes, sir for the next 20 plus years to pay for the remodeling project, correct? Correct. And um, that is embedded now fully into this budget, yes. correct? <coughs> and we see a, a reduction in total debt service because the center school bond was paid off this year, <coughs> correct? Okay, so we're all clear on that. Yeah. Okay? Great. Any other questions or comments, Mr. Walburton? Uh, can we talk about food service? It's not under debt service. Well, no, no there's no. nothing else there after debt service. Oh, so you said no. I can bring up food service. No. No. I'm Any sure other comment about debt service? No, I have none. Okay, thank you. Did we cover food service, uh, Nathan? I thought we no. did, didn't we? We haven't talked about it. I mean, no. it's Why isn't it in your budget? In the it's budget in section. the back of the book. I put, a pro, I put a pro forma in there each year. Mm -hmm. So there are two categories of gross mm -hmm. approval. Why, why is it not in the summary pages? Uh, it's below the it's below the total general fund line. Yeah, right. you want you to go all the way to that. If you go to the if you go to page six of six on the summary, oh, okay. it's at the bottom. In it's beneath the total of general fund. You see food service mm -hmm. and gross appropriation for federal funds. Oh, I see. Okay, yes, so sir. we're not done with our sections yet. Right. The next section will be food service, Mr. Walbert. <laughs> Thank you. A very good segue. Um, once again, uh, you know, I want to commend Mary Borg. Uh, food services is not easy. I mean, you talk about budgeting stuff, and it's a tough area, and I know the school board deals with it. My, I have a general question. I, I think I saw somewhere in the book we have uh, food service 
clerk one and food service two or something. Uh, in, in, you have to. And I don't want to be facetious. But what, a certification. There is a certification. What's it? They do not, the It's not. We're not. Not all of the staff have a uh, certification. It's about handling food safely. It's about yeah. serving suit. Serve safe. Serve safe, man. Right serve safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. So serve safe is the certificate. They so, but not all. We I have I have to have representation. I have to have certification in each kitchen, mm -hmm. but I don't have to have everybody certified. So, so there's two categories. So my question is because this is not the type of position that people normally look for, right? So you're lucky to have the. Mm -hmm. uh, are we paying these people enough to to keep them for? I mean, is somebody going to say I'm going to do this for ten years? Or, I'm just trying to figure with the amount of supervision. One, one of the nice parts of the job is is that it's a part time. The hours are, are abbreviated. Um, lots of times you'll have folks who are just looking for part time work. They may be retired or they're a mom with you know young kids in school. They just want school hours. So you know actually Mary's been able to fill her positions. Yes. We've been using the electronic sign at Hampton Academy and we post the job up on the sign and we've Mary's gotten great results from. It. So, all folks from in Hampton, which is nice, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's it's worked for us. But it's really because it's part time, fits mother's hours and retiree hours. So if you're ever looking for a job when you retire, the <laughs> cafeteria is always. Yeah, I'll bring. <laughs> yeah, I'll it's not like they're looking in Kansas for me. No, no, don't worry about it. No. I'll, yeah. So the thing I wanted to add as we get through this budget, I just want to make one more comment on this. Um, you know, I've referenced a lot of people tonight and, and just a wonderful education, the personnel we have here. There's a lot of people in the PTA and parent involvement. And, you know, I think of people like Amy Hansen for the in-school coordinator, you know, in-service or whatever their title is. But there's so, I could go on and on, and it's it just such a great organization. And, you know, and you, the both of you, as, as I said from outset, we're going to probably agree on most. We're going to have disagreements on some. But the model here is working. I mean, and I think you folks bring forth a great management team here and, and permeates right through down. We, there are issues that, as the chairman alluded to, as we get through January 9th, that, that we're going to probably bring forth and tweaking things. But overall, I, I've been happy with the discussion tonight and understand that our role is just to do that, right? So I appreciate what you did. That's oh, all I see. I it's a food service special fund, so there's a separate fund. Right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions on this food service special fund? Comments? No, thank you. And I guess next is gross appropriation, right? So we federal funds, right? So, so this is the place where you collect and expend money, or just collect money. It's a wash. The, right. the money, the money going out, is matched by money coming, coming in, in. reimbursed it from the yep. through the state's online system with their federal dollars, and we have to have gross appropriation regardless of the dollar amount. Right. And in this case, we have for some number of years had seven hundred twenty-five thousand there, and our our uh, federal uh, our federal allotment, the dollars that we have received, have been uh, in the low five hundred thousand the last couple of cycles. And that's IDEA for special needs programming. It's uh, Title I, Title II, Title Three, now Title IV. We have uh, all of those consolidated grants. Okay, so basically you need to have this on the budget as an appropriation yes. so that you can spend any money they happen to give you. Correct. And so you want to make sure that the number you put on this line is likely to be greater than the number they actually give you. That would be the intent of the law is that we make sure that it's greater than, yes. Hmm. Yep. So right now we've got Seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, right? And historically, we've been getting a half a million from them. Yes, sir. And so, if it were not true, then you would have some excess money you wouldn't be able to put anywhere except in your unassigned fund balance, right? So that's why you've got to have this number higher than what you right. expect to actually come that's in. That's correct. And yep. thus, it does kind of it at least visually inflate your operating budget, doesn't it? It does. Mm -hmm. But there's but it, but but there are pledged pledged revenues to offset it so that it has no local tax impact. I understand that. Right. I'm just I'm highlighting sure the that fact that, yeah, that it, your, it does your budget, the bottom line budget number is actually inflated by having to play that game with the Fed. Oh, right. Sure. Right. And food service is the same way because her program is about a Yeah, well, you've been breaking even or even profiting from that last few years, right? She did a couple of years. It's hurt. We're hurting right now. They're so we'll get Jerry Zanoy back. We're getting back in <laughs> yeah. to do a Pareto and then yeah. we'll, get, we'll get rocking. Okay. 
Uh, I believe that is it, unless you have any questions on the budget overall from SAU 90, comments, whatever. Um, Very good. Yeah, I think that, you know, you know, I was looking at some numbers earlier today, and SAU 90, SAU 90's budget is almost the same as the Tom's in terms of size, dollar-wise. And when you add in the state school tax, as it's sometimes called, it's actually more than that. And yet we as a budget committee, we spend, this year we're actually doing more meetings with SAU 90 than in the past, right? Because we're going to be meeting on January 9th again. Um, but I think that future budget committees may want to consider allocating more time to understanding um, more about the SAU 90 budget given the dollar size amount. And I think a big factor in that consideration is something that is not real clear to me. I read across some, some stuff in my research relative to what percent of a school's budget is actually mandated by state and federal law. And it's like an enormous piece of that pie. And I think that would probably be uh, something that would be helpful for us all to know more generally in terms of what that is for the SAU 90. Uh, because much of what you guys do are, are actually mandated by law, the actual costs, right? And, and I think the, the voters and, and maybe even some budget members are not sufficiently sensitive to that reality. You want to comment? In another that? district yeah. in past years, uh, and I've done it here with the school board, we had, a gra we had an analysis that broke down uh, fixed costs, not fixed, but mandated, mandated and contracted. Yeah. So between federal mandates that require us to do that and then contracted, meaning a collective bargaining <coughs> agreements and costs, when it's all said and done, including debt service and other things that really aren't, aren't questionable, they are what they are, we were talking about sm single, do single digit percentages that really are in any way discretionary. You're talking right. about a, a, a significant budget, and yes, then that's the seven, that's seven or eight or ten percent right. is really. And, and you'll hear a similar argument uh, at town level as well that you know we, we have these increases because we're contractually obligated here and there and whatnot, but much less so with the town as it is with the school. You have mandated costs, right. and I think uh, uh, breaking out the mandated costs by themselves yes. would be helpful for the voters. Because many of these mandates, of course, are coming down from the feds, right, and some from the state, right? Well, we have minimum standards, which we have to adhere to. So, yes, I mean, it's very clear what we have to do. But right. the other thing that we can't forget is the importance of providing our kids with an education that's going to prepare them. I don't know what the jobs are going to look like in 10 years. I don't know what they might look like in five years. <laughs> But, you know, one of the goals here in the district is to prepare the kids for Winnicott High School so that they can be successful Winnicott and top, top 100 high schools in, in the country just recently announced. We want to make sure that our youngsters from Hampton Academy are prepared. And we were very pleased when we have one-to-one -one Chromebooks that allow them to, have the tech to, to be able to mm -hmm. use the technology and, and, and in many ways. So I, I think one of the problems we have is, yes, there are mandates. Yes, there are requirements. Yes, there are rules and regulations. But on the other hand, we also want to be able to expand the horizons of our kids. And, you know, maybe uh, I, I, we have... Um, uh, the kids are going, one of the things that the kids are going to have at Hampton Academy is a is a kiln. They 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 want to do pottery. It's very popular in the seacoast, as you know, and, and there's a lot of potters here, and, and they're going to have that. That's not mandated, okay? It isn't, but yet it's an activity and an opportunity for kids to to find something that they excel in and that they can use in a in a productive way. So. I, I appreciate the, the, the requirements. We live by them <laughs> when we die by them. But I also will always be committed to providing what we think um, youngsters need um, to meet all of their various needs. Mm -hmm. That's great. I just think it's really important. And we have great kids. That we call out the actual cost of the yeah. mandates. mandates. Because when you come right down to it, these things that you're referring to, Kathleen, are infinitesimal compared, in terms of dollar costs compared to the mandates. And I think the voters need to be aware uh, when they're voting in the federal elections and as well as the state elections. Right. Well, these politicians right. start talking about how they can make the schools perfect with right. their vision, right. and which translates into ultimately mandates, uh, some of which may or may not make right. as much sense as they ought to. Well, we have unfunded mandates. And so mandates. having visibility as to what the dollar cost of the mandate is, is the beginning to open the conversation locally on that matter. And that's, that's what I was trying to encourage.
Well, I want to. Well, no, I, I just wanted to add unfunded. Normally, yeah. these mandates right. come down right. unfunded. Well, I want, I want to put a plug in. Uh, the board has authorized us to move ahead with a strategic plan. We completed a five-year um, strategic plan, the board. Um, it, was, um, it was finished in June of 18, and uh, they've authorized uh, the beginning of a new one, and I'm in the process right now of um, facilitating focus groups. And so I will be gathering, um, obviously, our staff, our administrators, but community people, uh, parents, uh, uh, elected officials, so I'm going to be looking for some budget committee members to participate in focus groups to help us create the vision and the mission for the future for Hampton. And I, I think having an understanding of some of the things that you talked about tonight will be very helpful for, for that discussion. Any other questions or comments for the Mr. LeBranch? I have to do a shout out. Go Shark News. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. Yes. Thank you very much for coming in and, and educating, educating our, us. Our as pleasure, as always. Yeah, our pleasure. We, and we'll see yeah, you no nice. later than January 9th. 9th, right? there we go. Okay, we'll we'll forward we'll to you so much for a new reason. Now. Yeah, I, I will be ready. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, Thank you. Cable people, could I have the monitor, please? Cable <coughs> TV will give you the monitor <coughs> right now in a moment. But I wanted to talk about, uh, well, this is new business, of course, and we need to deal with our schedule. Um, as you know, we just got an update for SAU 90 coming in, in uh, Nine. January 9th. Which is a Wednesday. <coughs> Which is a Wednesday. Appreciate you guys' support. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you, okay, Keith. Keith. Take Thanks, care. Jess. Thank you. Uh, January 9th is a Wednesday. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mr. Oh, I know my dates. Yeah. Is this uh, room available then? Yes. Or is it planning calendar? Time. The schedule. We already have. I, I, I understand. Planning's first and third Wednesday is filled. Okay. We, what I did was when I created this calendar, I included <coughs> SAU 90 in our various final reviews. This Thursday. All right, just in case we decided to go that way. Today's the fourth. And we decided not to go that way, but then new information came that caused us to go that way. So it just happens that Kathleen picked that date, I believe, because she was already plugged into it anyway. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we're okay on that date. Um, I do have some concerns relative to the town, uh, and I wanted to share those with you. Uh, as you can see at our Thursday meeting, we have the funds review. Stephen? I'm sorry. Can I help you with something? Do you want me to oh, I'm explain that? I, I'm sorry. I want me to make it bigger? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. She How's asked that? a question. Yeah. Good night. Yeah, that's better. Thank you very much. Good night. Okay, thank you. There you go. Now you can see it. Now I can, yeah. If you have a problem, just thank you. Know, let me know. Thank okay. Um, who was it? Oh, yeah. Um, the funds came in uh, late this afternoon from Christy. It was uh, it was not the Excel spreadsheet. It was the PDF form. You know, the image, default. Image form. No, no. The list of funds. The oh, I didn't status. see that. Okay, thank you. I didn't send it out yet because oh. I, I she did not include the uh, fund values for the funds held by the trustees of the trust fund. Okay. And so I asked for the Excel spreadsheet, and I asked for those numbers as well. Uh, in any case, it, it's not going to be available tomorrow because she's going to have to get those fund totals. Mm -hmm. And if she if she decides for whatever reason not to get those fund totals, then I can use the Excel spreadsheet to get them myself. So it won't be ready for Thursday, basically, yeah. in my my estimation. In any case, we want a little time to look at it. Right. You know, uh, so I'm thinking about moving the funds over to the December 18. As you can see on December 18, I've got executive, and I'm thinking about moving executive from the 18th to Thursday night. Can they make it? Well, they'll be here for other purposes, yeah. Um, the information technology budget, and as you know, last year we, we passed, the town passed the Warren article to upgrade the um, fire department's PC equipment, basically. Yeah. And embedded in there was verbiage about outsourcing the town website. Yeah, nobody noticed it, I know. But, uh, it was there. Uh, and only one person spoke on that at the third session. Just can't remember who it might have been. But in any case, uh, I finally got my hands on the uh, so-called contract for the outsourcing of the website uh, just today. And so, um, I'll get that guy out to you tonight at the moment. Um, but I'm thinking also moving InfoTech 
over into the 18th as well, so that we have time to consume that. Um, That's the website name, Infotech? No, no, Infotech is the uh, oh, the actual okay. the budget section. I didn't call it MIS because it, no, no one really relates to it, so I just put it in Infotech. But that's actually MIS, okay? Excellent. Tim, excuse me, Mr. Yes. Chair. The only concern I, the only concern I have would be that on the 18th we're going to be doing the town money warrant articles, and I, which we still don't have any. I know we don't, but yeah. there those are we, and those that we do are likely to be the pro forma ones well, if we do have any. When you think thing, about it, the first ones that are going to come out are going to be like. You know, mm -hmm. the human service agencies and the hazardous waste collection. No, I know. Some of them are just, just yeah. pushed through. But, Pro yeah. but may I, I'm just wondering if you're putting too much on the 18th because you, you're you going to have all those revenue money were on articles and, and you've got other things, you know, lined up as well. If you move if, the info tech, I just don't know if there's enough time to do all of that stuff. Well, the same question can be applied to the, to, to the six on Thursday, whether we have enough time to do Well, if, it, if there isn't, now. then we have to roll it over. Yeah. But we we'll still have a chance to roll over from the 18th to, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, one of the snow dates or even the, even the review. All right. The okay. Thank you. That's a so, point uh, made. Okay. And there's also, I mean, there's the argument of using the 13th, which is still December 13th, which is yeah. still a snow date. Mm -hmm. um, and if you guys want to, we could. Well, let, let's use wait the 13th. Why don't we wait and see if what see what we, happens to Thursday. Or, right. or we could say to hell with the 18th and use the 13th instead. So, uh, yeah, we we're on the holidays, and I want you guys to have. So a that would mean we'd have one meeting this week instead of two. And no, no, that's still, not going to change. We're uh, going to have Thursday next meeting. We're still going to have Thursday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. didn't you just? Thursday. Oh, you six. said the 18th. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm get, you're confusing me now. Okay, it's getting late. You know? yeah. So basically, Steve, what I'm saying is the 18th is seven days before Christmas. Some people might be more comfortable having that meeting on the 13th because of the mm -hmm. relativity to the Christmas and New Year's holidays. So you're suggesting we move everything on the 18th to the 13th? I'm not suggesting it. I'm saying that's an option. Okay. okay. I'd like to make that motion. You like that idea, Frank? I like that idea. You know, I think everyone in this room would like to accommodate you. Do I hear any objection to accommodating Frank? No, we don't. We consensus. We don't need a motion. Okay. So the 18th will now become the 13th, and the and the 18th. Excuse me. The 13th will now be the 18th, and the 18th will now be a snow day. Exactly. Right. Okay. Okay. So and we're moving MIS, aka Infotech, into the 13th. The 13th mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Fine. Okay. And I believe I have everything covered in terms of what we need to cover. But <clears throat> someone tell me I'm wrong because I make mistakes, you know? And well, as I don't like to catch them at the last minute. So executives this Thursday or it's going to be the 13th? Yeah, we're changing it to oh, okay. 48 hours away, you know, 40 That's hours right. away. Yeah. Okay, fine. The only, uh, um, we also, uh, I only had a couple of comments. Oh, yeah, I had one other thing on the, uh, the assessing. Um, yes. I did dig up a contract that I got an email, um, and I'm ready to send it out. But, and I was ready to send it out before, but I understood that it was being reviewed by DRA. Mm -hmm. And since I haven't heard anything, I assume it's still current. So I guess I'll send it out. That's why I didn't send it out previously, since it wasn't you know, immediately topical for us and right. it had not yet been fully curated. I guess it has been by now. So I'll send out that assessing contract, which is on Thursday, the assessing department. I'll send it out either late tonight or tomorrow. And uh, go ahead. Are we on to the final two topics, or I mean, just final thoughts, or before we adjourn? Oh, we're getting there. We're done with the schedule. Any questions, comments, whatever? Any way we can improve the schedule? Okay. Yes, we're on. Uh, we're on to. Let, let's listen to Brian's final thoughts on tonight. No, no, just one quick comment. Everybody watched the selectmen's meeting. Um, if I heard Christie right, the default budget is like five hundred ninety-four thousand. Less than. Well. I think she said 594. Less than the proposed budget. Less than, less less than, than the, yeah. the proposed 2019 right. budget. That's a huge. And the only other thing, could I ask you, Mr. Chairman, because I didn't want to email because I don't know, you know, I, I, I saw that fiasco a couple of years ago, which was ridiculous. But um, I went over the, we are going to have great 
dialogue on cemetery because I get some more information on that that we're going to need to talk about. But what I need, if I could ask you or the members to do, when I looked under part-time wages that said 90000 it doesn't add up to ninety; it adds up to seventy. So I'm missing something here. Mm -hmm. And they put health insurance, if the new superintendent, which if he, he deserves that, that 20000 insurance, obviously we'd want him to have if he's in full time. I just need that clarified because I kept adding it over the weekend and I said it doesn't add up to 90 because that 20 was in a second category. So if you could ask Christy to kind of look at that or whoever, the cemetery trustee. I could. Or, if you could email me the specifics. Okay. Uh, if that's okay. I, I will get them out. Yeah. To, because that's, we still have uh, one, at least one important question for well, you relative to the well, yeah, I think we've got four or five important questions. Well, that's all we have presently. Oh, recorded. really? Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about it. So, but that's, uh, that's all I had. Okay. And they may have implications on our schedule. Right. So you're going to need to do a drill down on this stuff. I know you talked about previously about going over salary specific, have a meeting specifically on that topic. Yeah. Um, or we might have to wait to the final meeting to do a final, uh, what do well, you call it? We'll be motion. way too busy then, you know, with all the warrant yeah. articles and whatnot. We'll have to So stop. again, the 18th comes back to mind if that's what you want to do. Uh, but we can wait until the 13th to make that Let's decision. Let's see if we do. Okay. okay. Yep. I hear okay. Mr. LeBranch. I do want to mention. Um, Cemeteries. I watched sure. this budget meeting when you were. Uh, there was the uh, the Sexton. I think that's his yeah, name. Had a hell of a title. And yeah. and also one of the um, trustees. trustees. And <laughs> it's interesting the some of the questions that came up. Um, and also, why isn't this being paid for by the the trust the fund? Thank you. And the following Monday, um, when they were going over the, the money warrant articles, there were at least three. The people that were here that night didn't seem to no. know too much right, of what was right. happening. But the following week, they had three money warrant articles regarding the cemetery, and each one of them was taking money out of the trust fund. Just wanted to mention that. I think that the cemetery is something having watched the meeting it was there were an awful lot of unanswered questions and so it's probably something that when we get to those money run articles for the cemetery we can start we can resolve some of those questions perhaps just i'm just making a that's comment that's a good point just right. making a comment you know, very good point every year we have the same problem we're subject to what i refer to as a document dump at the last minute we have yeah. this, this uh, dump of warrant articles put on a lap and we have precious little time to deal with them. Yeah. And so what I'm trying to do is afford enough time in the schedule to uh, flex, to enable us to have enough time to deal with whatever comes up. Mm -hmm. If we have a document dump, as an example for this, those public hearing snow dates are not just for snow. Okay? So, you know, we can, we can go all the way up to the January 23rd, uh, to, to actually finalize everything. That's correct. And uh, that's just what we'll do if we're suffering from a document dump. But I want you guys to realize that if you have a problem like with cemeteries and you want to say we'll schedule it for a particular date, like a snow date, January 3rd, or January 9th, uh, or January 3rd, I should say, is, uh, or, January, or December 18th, which is now a snow date, feel free to bring it up because I have a feeling that I'm hearing Cemetery here, and I'm hearing cemetery there. Yeah, but I think some of that will be resolved once we get into those money, money warrant articles that they they have the three of them for the cemetery. It's gonna it's gonna kind of bring that together a little bit. Okay, well, just want to highlight just, that since you're bringing yeah. up that's a good example of, mm -hmm. of how that how we have to manage the schedule because you know you've you've been chairman before and what a nightmare can be we just get dumped on these especially that one year where we got one warrant article a very minute we were opening the public hearing yeah that's i right. mean it's just uh not going to happen this year yeah well okay. the thing thing is tim is that you are reviewing the schedule at, at the end of every meeting so kind of updating it and i think that's yeah. working pretty well very well thank you i do it actually about three times a week but once during the meeting yeah okay great <laughs> very well. any any other uh comments questions whatever our next meeting is not tuesday thursday it's but thursday. thursday december 6th thank you barbara for that correction and I will see you then we are adjourned thank you thank you